Hello and welcome to Season 2, Episode 8 of Les Odorants. I am Dan and I am joined as always by Fliss, Ben and James. Say hello everyone. Hello, hello. Hello everyone. Hello. <laughs> Say hello everyone. <laughs> hello everyone. It's a very <laughs> literal response there, James. I like that. Um, well, we are recording on uh, the Sunday of the bank holiday in May. I say the bank holiday. There are like about... 17 bank holidays in May um, and in fact if you combine the bank holidays and the teachers strike days it turns out that my kids are going to school for negative number of days in in, in May um, they are literally not going to school you might as well just fuck ridiculous. May off aren't they? just write yes. it off yeah, exactly. start it's, the summer holidays it's a, now it feels like it, it. it's a bad do um yeah good uh so let's go perfumey business oh no hang on i want to just add a little disclaimer a little caveat um which is that because it is a bank holiday i will be treating myself throughout this program to a couple of glasses of wine which means that the quality of my repartee will deteriorate over time and in fact in the second half of the episode we are going to be talking about stuff what we hate and uh, uh, I'll be honest, that's my specialist subject, and a well-lubricated me is likely to be pretty fucking obnoxious. You're getting so, yourself ready with. for Ranter of the Year, aren't you? You want to be owed I, Ranter of the Christmas episode, that's what it is. I, I, I didn't get any recognition uh, uh, last year for my ranting. It was all, it was all Ben... It was all Ben yeah. being all ranty, and he got all the props, and 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 you fucking ranting about your sports fragrance. Yeah, not me. Nobody said good rants, Dan. So, uh, so today is the day. Cool. Well, I'm playing it cool, <laughs> but I've got some pretty good rants up my sleeve. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm a lover, right. not a fighter, so I really struggle to find well, stuff to to rant about. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. No, that, did I fuck? Seems, of course I didn't. Uh, I have loads of things to rant about. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, uh, yeah, so James, what is it that you hate? Well, <laughs> how yeah. long have you got? <laughs> yeah, we've got about three oh, okay, hours, I cool. think. So, uh, yeah, good. Right, um, let's uh, talk about perfumey stuff. Um, uh, what can I tell you? I can tell you that since the last episode, I have received... My bottle of Dana Taboo. Ooh. 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 Yeah, I mean, um, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a very feminine perfume, right? I mean, this really does smell like old woman, <laughs> right? Um, probably probably quite rich old woman, uh, or maybe used to be rich, but now buys twenty pound bottle of perfume off eBay. Um, but in just sheer value for money terms. Um, I don't think I've ever come across a perfume that is that strong and that long-lasting for that price. Therefore, this represents the highest smell per pound, uh, you know, smell-to-price ratio perfume ever. I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. Uh, and I'll you're be honest, not, I'm not in love with this perfume. But, well, I like the perfume. I just don't see me really yeah. ever wearing it, which is odd because uh, I did also get... In the same week, this bottle here of uh, Bal à Versailles, Ooh. Um, which is the it's the EDT oh, that's version. That's a nice one you've got there as well. It's lovely, and this is quite old womany as well, mm. but it's much more refined. It's much less kind of like uh, uh, beat you around the head with a fucking handbag sort of old woman. This is <laughs> this is probably this is the sort of uh, 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 older woman who who may you know, uh, gaze at you sort of slightly lustfully and inappropriately across a room. Ooh. Whereas Dana was doesn't. just basically made with the whores. Yeah. Really. Yeah, Dana Tabu I mean, might have shouting, started with... Fi it's a five or a time, mate, across the, across the <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, you, yeah, Honestly, mate, you, you are so spot on. It's ridiculous, right? Balavasai is kind of suggestive and, and flirtatious. Taboo is basically like uh, babe station. Know, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's Babe Station. Yeah, it's the free five minutes of Babe Station at 11, 11 o'clock. Not that I'm uh, aware of it on TV or anything, but you know what I mean. You fucking know. The Bella uh, yeah, so having... I always think when I smell it, I, was, I, I sold my bottle stupidly a long time ago, but I do have a little bit left. And it always reminds me, you can kind of see the sketches in some of those really big sheep pros, um of things mm. like Jubilation or whatever um, in it. Because it's, I mean, it is, it's so full. It's everything in the kitchen sink and it's big. And I, I just feel mm. that there's a lot in there that is, you know, historically that you can see carried forward to sort of more modern, more modern offerings. Mm. Mm. It, it's, it's, it's actually very, uh, I mean, it opens quite sort of, uh, I guess, big, but it, it settles quite quickly into um a sort of powdery sheepra mm. which actually is just it's really very very attractive i really like it um i've worn it most evenings this week actually uh it's just it's a nice com ah uh, i hate the word comforting. comforting yeah yeah no it cut well i was going actually i was going for comfortable yeah. you know it's very it's very easy uh going it's it's this surprisingly easy going perfume i thought it was going to be much more of a sort of head kicker but uh, it's Apparently not it's michael Jack- jackson's perfume of choice oh. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of other people's as well but that's the one that always sticks uh, out uh, <laughs> yeah 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 a lot of other people uh jimmy samuel <laughs> bill cosby um yeah yeah uh not 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 i deal uh, association there uh, anyway uh, anyway that's good um right uh, well uh, speaking of people that look like they're expecting a phone call from operation yew tree i also wore the new fragrance dubois uh which is uh, a collaboration oh. with producer michael um, exactly who the fuck produ- is producer michael i even googled him and was like i still don't know i've just read a blurb about him and i don't know if it was so like it does he, is he something to do with watches? I don't know. I mean, he's meant to be a music producer, but he's like, oh, he's done yeah. like like my, uh, Brian McKnight, who is like a kind of sort of soul singer and like, I don't know, like a few other people that you're like, I kind of know who that is, but like... So I think he is nowadays just more famous for being an internet persona. So um, he, he brand himself started- as producer Michael. When yes. you see his face yes. and the kind of, you know, various <laughs> surgeries he's had, he, you'll see, you'll kind of he, see why. But he's got a kind of, kind of curiously off-brand West Midlands uh, sort of <laughs> um, accent as well. He sort of sounds like, uh, he sounds like he probably uh, works down at the Tesco, but he doesn't, he's a producer. Um, and oh, I think he got sort of off... Yeah, he's he got, got famous, I think, making videos about himself. Really and expensive his bond perfumes. possessions. Yes. Uh, Where well, he did. Well, yes, but I think it was his love of perfumes that got him hooked up with Fragrance Dubois. Anyway, they he, he, he did a couple of collaborations with them. The first one was called uh, a PM, as in producer Michael. And it was... I mean, to be honest, I, I think Fragrance Dubois makes some bloody amazing perfumes, but that one was just, like, uh, so fucking, so aggressively obnoxious. You know, it, you know, in keeping with producer Michael's uh, sort of personal style, you know, it, it basically, um, I, I described it as, as, like, being mugged by a gang of disco dancing bikers, it was uh, it was like not good. But that that's not um, that's not the brand that, though. It might be in keeping with him, but it's not in keeping with uh, uh, fragrance Dubois, yeah. who, in fairness, are quite a refined, quite sort of polite. But in the main, you know, I, I agreed. And 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 I I can't help wondering whether it isn't a bit of a misstep for a brand like that to sort of uh, because they are a, uh, a a very sort of high end luxury that's how they sort yeah. of pitch themselves high end luxury sort of brand but but also refined and elegant and 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 producer michael is just brash and obnoxious i mean just what i'm just looking know, he, at his um his his web page at the moment he's got over a million point three youtube subscribers and a bunch of other following but just watching it it's I mean, he's obviously very rich, but it's tacky as fuck. It's gaudy watches. I it's, mean, I, I like yeah. watches, right? But I'm into, like, you know, things that are, like, tasteful. 
um yes okay they're sort of pushing the boundaries with all these like weird uh you know weird and wonderful sort of watches and it is kind of cool but like in practical terms like one no one can really afford them i know you could say the same about like supercars or whatever but i kind of just sort of mm. switch off and i'm like all oh, right okay you know the man likes a print doesn't he he does like a bit of a print on his clothing. He loves a flor- loves a floral print on his clothing. Uh, I mean, and this really is, um, I guess, uh, where where I land on the overall perfume. They are broadly uh, uh, in keeping with his personal sort of style. They are extroverted, obnoxious, gaudy uh, perfumes. The first one was. Um, uh, just um, someone described it on on Instagram. It wasn't me, but I loved the the thought of it. Uh, it said it, it it hung around like a drunk wedding guest who refused to leave. Um, so it's just like the eternal shit fest. The the first one, but but AM, which is the one that uh, I tried recently, is is actually sort of serviceable enough. It's still not my style, and it it has uh, it has a sort of thread of familiarity with the pm one um and and i don't think it's ever going to be uh, it's, it's never going to break into my top 10 favorite perfumes but it's okay uh but i thought it was worth mentioning it just uh because oh yeah that's why because we were riffing on uh on michael jackson what a terrible entry point to that discussion um good right uh so also fliss last week's patchouli episode um, you, apparently people wrote to you to say it was brilliant. No one ever writes to me. I didn't say they wrote to I'm... you to say it was brilliant. They, they wrote to me and said, a couple of people said that they really enjoyed it, that it was funny and it was interesting. A couple of people that wrote were perfumers or whatever, and they said it was really interesting to hear us talk about stuff that they take for granted um, and mm. to have a kind of like a an enthusiast's view on it as opposed to, you know... Just all the chemistry. Was that a polite thing for uneducated Muppet? <laughs> plebs. Yeah. The plebs. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to say. I really wouldn't like to say, Who? but, you know. I'd, pff, well, I'd, whatever. <laughs> they listened. That's the main thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, I had uh, a message from um, uh, Adam Adam Forziati. Uh Sorry if I've mangled your name there, Adam, but I'm kind of known for mangling names, um, who is Spoken Ethers on Instagram. And um, we had some mad technological sort of issues. He sent us like a voice note on Instagram, and I had no idea how to get it out of fucking Instagram. So he kindly sort of screen recorded it uh, into WhatsApp, and uh, it was fucking chaos. Um, Anyway, I've sort of uh, forgotten what his point was. Uh, oh, yeah, no, it was on the point of maceration. Maceration um, versus degradation. Yeah, um, and he basically, I think he broadly was arguing that maceration is anything up to the point of it being bottled and sold, essentially, and everything, once it's in the bottle, is degradation. Yeah, so his, his argument is that maceration is a process in perfumery that has to take place before sale. Um, and then, yeah, as you say, anything after that is well, degradation. We even if that, even if that degradation is something that you end up liking. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, we didn't say any difference. No, that, we so. didn't. We, we uh, no, sort of. I, I think what had happened was you had said uh, i can't even remember what the perfume was you were talking about james but you'd said it sort of i think it maybe it was uh, the vintage fahrenheit and uh, you'd saying it was it maybe uh, degraded a little bit over time yeah. and fliss I said something said. like well you yeah you call it degradation i call it maceration ah, right. and and he, so he got, he in, got touch in touch with to say, dan to pick me up <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah, go in touch. Fan, go in I, touch I, I, with I, there's me. There's a lot of mansplaining going on there. Yeah, we love just our give fans. me a call, babe. Exactly. Just give me but a call. Fuck you, Adam. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> no, no, don't uh, fuck you, but no, you know. no, I, no, I, you're going to pick me up. No, then pick me good, up to my face. No, it was a good uh, <laughs> distinction to make because that is that is the case that maceration, like say, is J- James. What? James, you are the only person in the world who, when someone writes in to say, James, you were right, you go, well, fuck you. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I was actually, 
d- defending uh, Fliss, even though she doesn't need defend. She's like, fuck you, you fucking <laughs> chauvinist bastard. No, um, <laughs> I no, no, I know, I know, I know. But you don't need defending. You're fine. You I, can defend I, yourself. I think you did say yeah. that. Uh, you said that. And, and, we'll, we'll, and listen you said we'll listen let's back. We'll listen back in a bit. No, let's just clarify. <laughs> okay, I, it was a, it was all a big joke. It, the, you know, I don't want to break character at all, but you know, I do joke about things. So basically, yeah, he's right, and it's a it's an important distinction to make, and we could even talk about that. That obviously maceration is uh, a, a critical. Uh, thing even before you can properly evaluate your perfume i you have to leave it for as you know a, a certain period of time if you look at uh les indemodables uh just to uh, mention mm. them again they have the maceration time uh actually on each one of their perfumes so if you look mm. on the website it'll tell you this one was aged for two weeks this one was aged for two months or whatever because they know the perfumer knows uh, when they try it after that certain amount of time that things will have settled down, and that's how you do, that's how you make perfume. So you basically, if you smell it immediately, yes, you can get an idea of okay, but then you have to leave it and you have to evaluate it after a certain period of time. Now, I don't know how you determine that period of time. They probably do it because they know about materials and stuff. I just do it on a rough basis of it has has it changed or perceivably you know is is there a difference so, over a certain amount of time i've got a dumb ass question i'm sure someone will write in and correct me or tell me well no, they'll write in to you and tell you the answer um but it, what what how do you know when does it stop macerating it because like a wine you have to let it age until you can drink it but then if you let you continue to leave it it continues uh, but the, the, this, this is just the point but that he was making. But with a perfume, though, yeah, but with yeah, a but... perfume, how do you know when it does well, it? What, it you, do you know what I mean? Does it just stop macerating well, and then suddenly it's degraded? It slows down drastically. I would it say it slows like, down. Like, okay. like like when I've made perfume, like this is like purely talking out my ass as like somebody who's dicked around in their bedroom. But from my experience, like <laughs> I think we've all dicked around in our <laughs> bedrooms, my friend. But from my experience, like those first couple of weeks is quite a drastic change. Like okay. you'll make something mm. and then you stick it in a cupboard, turn it around every day or so for like two weeks, and that'll be a really big change. And then after that, it doesn't really change much from there. Oh, okay, so it's kind of like a molecular half lifey kind of thing, except it's not radioactive. So please don't mansplain that to me. <laughs> well, wow. uh, funnily enough, I, I asked I asked a very similar question um, uh, of Renault uh, Salmon at <gasps> Amouage because I was t- sort of chatting to him about the um, forthcoming uh, Jubilation Forty, and he was saying that it had to basically uh, be... Uh, he didn't use the word macerate, but he was basically saying it had to uh, it had to be sort of uh, kept um, and aged for uh, so many weeks. Like, I think it was a couple of months. Mm. He said normally they do a couple of weeks, but in the case of these perfumes, it's a few months um, before they then bottle it. And I said, does it not keep developing after you bottle it? And he said it does but a much much slower rate once you bottle it um the it's it's when it's macerating kind of in a giant fucking vat that that's that's uh where that's the process that they sort of worry about once it's bottled it does keep developing degrading macerating whatever the fucking word you use it does but at a much much well slower rate. that's that's um, precisely the point that the that adam was making that maceration is the distinction up until the point of sale or when you deem that to be ready. So if you're working under, let's say, a quality management system or something like that, you would uh, br- that would be where it's ready to to be, uh, you know, uh, put onto the market. So you'd say, okay, well, this is what annoyed me about some indie perfumers who, and maybe that just a little foreshadowing of the... <laughs> Uh, things that annoy me uh, this isn't actually one of them officially but some some indie perfumers actually just make stuff and then like bang it out straight away and people are like oh it's changed or whatever and they're like yeah it's just maceration mate and it's like no maceration should be the period that you already take into account that you have at, at the end of the point of making your perfume i'm not saying many people do this because it's uh, pretty unprofessional but i have heard about this happening um that people will make it and just like bang it out straight away and then it will change uh you know quite drastically uh when someone's got it so this is something that you need to 
take into account as part of your manufacturing process uh and yeah it reaches a kind of stability if you like and then what you call it after that point it matters not because it still develops but just again at a slower pace and mm. you don't call it maceration do you know what i mean so that's the distinction that i think he's trying to sort of make it, it, it's it's a good and proper distinction um i'll be honest i'm i think we have fucking flogged this particular <laughs> horse uh, does anyone I, else though I, hear the throbbing like uh veins on the foreheads of all of the doer fanboys out there like go, <laughs> no it's my maceration it gets better with time <laughs> fucking sweaty twats <laughs> oh my god oh beth Ben, anyway. are you all right, Ben? Oh, it's going to be good. Yeah. That, great, yeah. that, that great big wall behind you is worth fuck all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, the wall of cunt. Um, okay, good. Um, so, Ben, uh, you can go first then. Oh, uh, I assume you've been doing nothing but wearing doer fragrances. Much better fragrances than that. Uh, yeah, well, okay, actually, go. Um, so, do you know, uh, I've a lot of Chenoir Noir, actually, Bordeaux, Ooh. but we spoke about that a lot. Oh, yeah, um, lovely. So, yeah, that's... Yep. Funnily enough, you said about a comfortable perfume. That's That's been my comfortable perfume the last couple of weeks. It's been mm. that and the Prada uh, Infusion Dom that you sent me. Um, mm. Yeah. Very lovely. thankful lovely. for that. Thanks very much. Uh, yeah, I've been wearing those two yeah. in the evenings, like, really nicely, like, like just kind of like, it's like you put it on and it's just fresh, clean, comfortable. So we wear a lot of that. Yeah. Um, but we spoke about those quite a bit. And then, yeah, funny enough, the other one I've been wearing a lot of is another one we've spoken too much about probably was um, Amouage Reflection 45. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I sort of used up the rest of that um, sample vial that we got sent from uh, Amouage. And that, that's, I still really like that, you know. Like, I, I, I kind of, every time I spray it, I sort of get your voice in my head saying, Le Mal. You fucking sell out. Um, and, and then I feel... My voice? Well, you sort of, like, said to me, like, when we were doing the thing, like, you do realise that this is pretty mainstream and smells like the mouth, right? And I was just like, yeah, but I like it. <laughs> but now I kind of can't shake that association. Um, but I still like it. So I would have worn, like, yeah, I wore, I, wore I like wouldn't that. have met. I wouldn't have said that in a disparaging way. I was really <laughs> pointing out that, you know, it doesn't smell like bottled fucking barbecue or, or oh yeah or no it's more a sort of self disappointment go for a sort of self like disappointment in myself of of, of, of liking it do you know what i mean it's more sort of like oh, but you know i'm so mean yeah exactly yeah you know like i'm i'm such a fucking norm uh, um yeah well done uh, no you're not babe you're not <laughs> um <laughs> yeah but yeah we spoke yeah, about no that quite a lot that, ben. so the love one that i've been wearing like the last one really i guess the only one i've really got that we have that i haven't really talked about too much before was sham zood by memo which i do think i mentioned once uh I, i've yeah i've got that that is a fucking brilliant perfume it's nice it's isn't it? so good I, I I wore that actually quite recently as well. It's and it, it's it's everything that's good about um, it's everything that's good about sort of I guess niche perfumery uh, in the sense that it doesn't smell remotely mainstream or anything, but it still manages to smell nice. Yeah, and it goes on forever, and it's interesting, <laughs> and it's just yeah, I I really. It's a it's a great perfume in in almost every regard. Um, it's very very hard not to like it, and yet it doesn't smell like anything else on the market. So yeah, do you I know think it's brilliant. I, what I like about it, like, and it sort of fits into what you're saying, is that although it goes, it, it smells like quite a lot of things that I have, like in that genre of like kind of woody, dark amber, spicy, hmm. like those sorts of things, and I've got quite a lot of those. But like you say, like it, it's it also doesn't smell like you like a dump truck or like you know you could wear it mm. to like quite a nice function and people wouldn't think you shit your pants, which you no, can't no, no. say for Sorry. a lot of my perfumes to be honest. So like it, it's, yeah. it's it's it, it's <laughs> it, that is true. It's it's it's, it's very ref- it's memo, isn't it? It's refined. It's it's it is. It's, um, hmm. You know, it's not shouty. It's not in your face. You can like it's presentable. Um, 
and it's good and like you say but it lasts most, fucking forever like really it, which is quite quite odd for memo mm. because most of the memo perfumes tend to just sort of vanish pretty quickly and they're all kind of minimal sort of stripped down sort of things but i think shamsud has got a sort of gingeriness to it which um i think just makes it absolutely lovely um and it's very enjoyable without being at all kind of mainstream in my view yeah i definitely re- recommend it to... sorry sorry go it's on, a Chris. sister house to flyku isn't it yeah that's yes it. Yeah. yeah um i actually got it in a swap i swapped it with um what was the one that they'd released with the dragon on the front that looks so sexy the bottle was beautiful mm. it was like a white bottle with like this chinese was dragon on the front. winter's palace that's the one yeah I had that, and I, yeah. I, I just—it was such a disappointment. So I swapped it with, mm. um, you know, Dean Martin off the groups. Yeah, uh, yeah. Dean, I yeah. yeah. Swapped it with Dean for Shamsud, and uh, I think he got a bit of a deal out of that actually, because I bought the Winter Palace like full whack, um, which was like quite a lot more than Shamsud. But fuck it, like mm. who cares? I, I ended up like happy anyway because I got a nice perfume. But yeah, no, I think I yeah. definitely recommend it if you like like the darker ambers, like dark woods, things like that. But you know, want something that actually you can also wear to your nan's funeral. Happy days. Hmm. Excellent. I shall uh, bear that in mind. Uh, not that I'm expecting to go to my nan's funeral fingers again. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah. <laughs> Definitely yeah, fingers well, crossed if you say again, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, it would be a... Because then would, we're all we're fucked if we do. It would be a very weird sign of the times if uh, uh, if she were reanimated uh, and then died again. Jesus. Uh <laughs> I assume, Fliss, anyway, you've not smelled Shamsu. I haven't, no. And, and uh, I think I may have done. I can't really remember. Mm, we're going to have to take care of these fuckers with some samples, mm. aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. All right. What else, Ben? Anything else exciting? Um, yeah. Do you know, not really. Uh, I suppose Cousin Matthew by Penn Halligans. I wore that a few days. Oh, um, really? It's one of the por- uh, portraits collection, mm. um, but it's a very green one. Is, is anyone familiar with Ballard Sauvage, um, the Privé mm. collection, Dior? Uh, no, I don't okay, think I know. That's the only way I really like. like they, oh, that, I know that. that. They, they yeah, smell yeah, quite yeah. similar. Is it a kind of fig? Ballard Sauvage. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So that's the only difference. The key difference is that Ballard Sauvage has got like a massive fig, whereas uh, Cousin Matthew is much simpler. It's just green. Very, um, like, fresh. It's got a, a, a quite a galbanum kind of feel to it, which actually I don't like. But in this, it kind of works all right because it isn't too cloying and, and too, like, throaty and it it it, it doesn't make me want to vomit. It's because of um, Matthew, the, the uh, rooster top, the, the cockerel. It's the one duck. with the duck. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, um, is it and, impudent and cousin Matthew or something? Is yes, it? yeah, yeah, that's impudent. the one. Impudent. Yeah. Yeah, stupid um, name for a perfume. But yeah, it's <laughs> nice. It's like a really fresh, clean green perfume, like really good for spring. Um, it, and it it does last pretty well, considering it's a Pen Halligans that's good for spring. You would you would immediately assume that that's crap, right? But yes. um But yeah, no, it's it's actually like really persistent. And it, it, I tell you what, it reminds me of a lot. Actually, it should be a Creed perfume. Like when I smell it, I feel like it should be a Creed perfume. Um, <laughs> I mean, take that as you will, but like you know, it just it just gives me that sort of vibe of those. The, the all creeds have that kind of similar sort of green galbanum, fresh, clean centre, don't they? And and that, or not, I don't really say all, but all the ones that I've smelled do. Um, mm-hmm. And 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 I know cousin Matthew just sort of seems to thrive off that. Um, I sure yeah, have um, to dig it out and give it a whirl. I'm sure I've got a sample. It's not of it the somewhere. worst. I sw- for like high praise green indeed green. they should put that on the fucking uh, on the poster for it it's not the worst um, well uh, so I got it in that do you remember they had that um, deal where you'd get like uh, you put space, spent 75 quid and you got yeah. a free um, portraits mm-hmm. collection mm. I got it in that and for 75 quid I felt pretty I, happy I, I, I would um, say but for the original price I feel yeah, pretty that's rid- they are ridiculous <laughs> I did buy one of those ones but I, d- I did sell it um, on a on a Facebook group but uh, I wouldn't uh, some of those are quite interesting even though as a collection they're a bit disappointing and they're more about mm. the kind of animal caps and the uh, really vibrant like food colouring colours of them um, which is yeah, kind of cool yeah. if you like that and it kind of you know it makes you go yeah I kind of want one of those in my collection but uh, 
the actual perfumes themselves, I think they're very modern and they're very kind of not really what Pen Halligans were doing, but in a good in it in a good way because their normal collection, yeah, they they're kind of covering other bases, aren't they? So, and I think some of them are better than you know. But again, if they're about half the price, or you can get them cheaper, obviously than than retail, uh, which I know is your guy's kind of mantra of no, never pay retail. Mm-hmm. And you you totally that <laughs> yeah. is a that is a, a classic case of where I would never pay retail, uh, and I kind of you know I, I think they're a yeah prime example of yeah that i tell you what though as an aesthetic and a, a collection like a I, I, they're, they're, they're really well done like i really like the way it's like a, a family like an old aristocratic aristocratic family and they've all got like the characters written on the box of their relationships to other like yeah. characters and how how they are in the family and i, I it's really quite well done. Like, I really yeah, think it's yeah. good. Um, I remember I got, I did, it, Pen Halligans did this kind of thing where they were like, oh, you're a Pen Halligans customer. Can we ask you about some, uh, like, marketing kind of research? And said, um, what about these for ideas for new collections? And they had, like, two different ideas, and they were so shit. They were just rubbish. <laughs> and considering that, like you say, that is quite a nice... Like, it's quite sort of tongue-in-cheek. It's quite, like, funny and sort of, you can see it kind of fits in with the brand, but it's, like, kind of fresh and, you know, I, I yeah, I like that. But some of these other ideas that they had were just, like, absolute. Like, they did, I think one was about, like, oh, should we do a, a series based on, like, stately homes? And it's like, who the fuck knows, like, state? do you know any stately homes? I mean, like, what? There's, like, the Duke's house where I live and maybe, like, is Tatton Park? I don't know. But, like, you know, like who fucking knows about them? You know, boring. Well, also, all stately homes all smell the same, so it's a fucking stupid idea. Yeah, like kind it's of like musty. Saying, should we do it? <laughs> yeah, should we do an entire range based on fucking concrete? It's like, <laughs> yeah, I so like, no, probably not. Um, I don't know. Um, okay, good. I'm sure you told them they were both stupid ideas as well. <laughs> of course I did, and they haven't done them, so maybe, maybe that was the consensus. Well. I, I'm assuming other people <laughs> told them they were shit ideas as well. <laughs> Somewhere in head office, some, someone's reading out a note from James. Hey, on, lads, we've got some feedback the from Houdini James The Houdini bat phone best went off. <laughs> yeah. He says best, it's shit. Best oh, not. It's a collective sigh oh, from the office. Dear. Yeah, I'm like this. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs down. <laughs> nice. Uh, excellent. Right, anything else, uh, Benjamin? Nah, that's about it. Excellent. Right, let's move on to Fliss. Fliss, what have you been wearing? Well, <clears throat> I have been wearing a lot of incense frags. I had, uh, I received a sample set of Filippo Sorcinelli. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, Isn't he the, the guy with the crazy, crazy fucking uh, backstories for... Uh, uh, <laughs> The perfumes. Well, I didn't read any of the backstories, but there was a little poem that he puts in with his um, it, it, with his sample sets, and it's all yeah. Then the last line is "Know how to cry!" Exclamation mark. You know, blah blah blah. Yeah, he's mental. Yeah, I mean, it's fully yeah, yeah. I, 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 and there's a lovely picture of him um, that that he sends as well, and he's got like bare feet and a big beard and a bald head, and some he cool sends pictures tattoos. of himself with his perfume you know, in, as part of the insert. You know, this is the creator. You know, and there's a little poem and stuff. I'm sure he's lovely. He looks like a serial killer. He looks. He looks. Um, he looks meditative he, and like he's really thinking deeply about philosophy and perfume. That's what he does. Uh, he like. looks like he he looks like he wants to start a cult in the desert. Yeah, he, that does have a little. He does have a little guru feel to it, doesn't it? Anyway, mm. the frags. Let's, let's get on with it. Um, so just just a quick interjection, if I may. Mm. Uh, mm. I just put in a Nui Noir the um, the the brief for a Nui Noir into wordcounter.com, right? And uh, it would take me three and a half minutes to read it to you, uh, <laughs> and it's a college student level, and uh, yeah, it has 627 words, and I looking at it, it's one solid paragraph <laughs> with very little punctuation. It's majestic. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. You say majestic, I say deeply tedious and pretentious. But, well, you know, I, I can um, tell you what it smells like to me, and I won't take uh, three and a half minutes. No, no one's interested, Fliss. Ben and I are talking about <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I'm going to give you the second, just just the second sentence of this of this brief, right? Just the second sentence is short. It is a sweaty sound flowing into the pulsating um, veins. Now, I, 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 I'm I'm no doctor, <laughs> but I am pretty sure you cannot flow a sweaty sound into a pulsating vein. That, and if you can, I don't want to smell it or see it or have anything to do with it. Yeah. And that sounds dangerous, mate. Uh, yeah. But, Fliss, you got all the perfumes, got, didn't you? Because I've smelled a few of them. And I feel like they're nothing like these no. briefs. They're quite, actually, quite tame. Yeah. I mean, so the three that I smelt, um, I smelt Labs, uh, Nuit Noir and Reliquiver. And I haven't done the other two yet. And Labs... I just felt was it's right up there with all of those very um, incense Western Church cathedral type smells, Avignon Cardinal, all up, all of those really is, full is, on is frankincense. That, is that is that one? Why do I think it's called Unum? What's 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 Unum? Is that that's the brand is name or something? That, yeah, no. So Unum is the brand. Of Filippo, yeah, it's confusing. Sorcinelli, yeah, yeah. It's got some that look like those things yeah, sorry. that you pull out on like a Hammond organ to like, I don't know, whatever they do. <laughs> those little slidey things. Anyway, it smelled very <laughs> anyway. churchy, kind <laughs> quite like a sort of like Western cathedral type of feel. But it was softer and easier to wear than either the Avignon, the Cardinal. There's a bit of jasmine in there, which kind of softens it all up a bit, and the dry down is quite suedey. It's nice enough. Um, I have so many incense rags. I was like, yeah, that's nice. But I, I, I don't think it really didn't move me to want more. Uh, Reliquiva, again, very citrus forward. Church incense, very, very heavy spices in the dry down. Possibly a bit sweaty. Uh, the person who sent me these called it Sweaty Priest. Uh, but I didn't think it was a sweaty priest. It was like a fruity priest. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> I think I think I think sweaty or fruity priest has all sorts of very wrongness, negative connotations very wrongness, yes. these days. Yeah. Well, I mean, this I, I, it, it smelled fine. I'd leave my children. I would my leave childhood. my children with this priest if he smelled of this. It wasn't. It was nowhere near oh as God. dodge as it could be. Um, and then the Anouilh Noir was very creamy and lavendery, chocolatey patchouli. There was a bit of heliotrope and vanilla in there. I, it's very soft and lovely. I almost wanted a bottle or at least 10 mil. And then the longer I wore it, the kind of soapier and it almost got a bit stale like a hospital. And I changed my mind after about three hours into the dry down. I was like, no, you don't need it after all. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, they're they're interesting to smell, but I wasn't like, fuck me, I need to get onto this brand. Interesting. I, I, uh, Good. Yeah, I think I was like that with all of them. Actually, I, well, I've tried. I, I've only. I've not tried them all. I've tried Labs and Nuit Noir, and but not today, which was the one that sort of hyped because it was supposed to supposed to be about is it Hannibal yeah, Lecter yeah. or something and like blood. Oh yeah, stuff. that's the I, Lair du Tomps. Sometimes you wear Lair du Tomps, yeah, but, but not today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, it was. They're all like you say. Like they're quite forgettable. I felt felt. Um, like, yeah, they're I, mean, nice. they're, they're, and, I think they're well made. But... I think they're well constructed. They've got like a story. They're not bad perfumes, but they're just not like wow. I didn't think, but that's yeah. just, that's just my well. I, I I've tried all of those that you're talking about, and uh, I wasn't particularly moved by them. But no, they are good, and I think in the moment they are quite thought provoking. But again, mm. they don't have a lasting effect on you where you go, oh, I'm going to return to that because there's a lot of those kind of themes. I think the guy's just trying to make a bottle so top heavy that it doesn't fucking stand up. Um, because yes. look at some of the tops. I mean, they're amazing. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and the, and he does have some kind of weird, like little pipey kind of one that looks like that Hammond organ thing that I was on about. Uh, and also those kind of ones that are like a sort of like the, the bot, the top is like draped over the whole bottle. Um, they're mm. pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's kind of style over substance. And he even did the weird dildo top thing before um, before Nasamato because he's got one called Cyber Sex, which looks oh. like a dick to me. I mean, like, have a look at it. 
Um, <laughs> I, 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 I like the way that you've had to caveat that with it. It looks like a dick to me. <laughs> It uh, might not be, but I'm, it's called not, cyber yeah. sex. I've seen some weird and dicks. There's a, protrusion. So, uh, there's a strange protrusion on the top of the and bottle. There's one called cruising area as well. There's one called <laughs> cruising area that looks very dodge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, anyway, so there was those. Um, and then I did what I was told not to do. And I tried the Carré Blanc by the zoo. And... There were, you know, when we did the zoo episode, there was a, a number of people said, you know, just be careful with Carrie Blanc. And even Brooke said, just be careful with Carrie Blanc. And I straight, I sprayed it on a strip and I was like, oh, this is nice. It's tart and citrus and rhubarb and softer than rhubarb, my love. And then it was sort of like a nutty hay note took over and a kind of a, a nutty orisey note. And I was like, this is rather nice. And so I sprayed it on my skin. What a twat. Um, and it, it just, it started out okay. And then it was just fucking relentless. And it got stronger and stronger. And there was this really yeasty cooking smell. Uh, and it just didn't stop. And the more I scrubbed it, the stronger it got. And I had to literally what? get a Brillo pad uh, 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 oh and God. scrub it with soap. I tried scrubbing it with soap, scrubbing my wrist with uh, formulators alcohol. Uh, it got in you. Take... It got in you. That's why. I was like, <laughs> it did, just... And... I mean, did you consider just amputating like, <laughs> below the... I fucking them? felt like it. And I was just like, you twat. Everyone said, don't spray it on yourself, Liz. It even says... In the notes on the brand website, be careful with this one. And I wasn't well, because put it, I don't. I, I don't take advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, put it this way: that's just an encouragement, isn't it? It's like, yeah. Um, I saw this uh, horrendous documentary. I mean, this might be going a bit dark, but um, saw this horrendous documentary Which, about that'd be very out of character, James. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll just quickly kind of go over it. So it was about like f- the fentanyl kind of crisis in America. And it was about these obviously really sad sort of people on the street. But they actually, like, th- there's people just going around, like, Narcan and the people, because they overdose every day. And the stuff is so strong that they'll, they just have it. But they seek out that stuff. Because they're like, oh, does someone die off that? Yeah, that's the one I want. And it's kind of like, what? It's the same with, like, perfume people. You go, be careful with that, mate. It's, you know, it's strong. And you're like, fuck you. I'm going <laughs> to wear that. And then, yeah. Put it this way. I sprayed this a week before we did the episode. So a yeah. week before we did that episode on the fucking what uh, the zoo ones, and so that's, I, that's, it's still there. It's still there. That's as strong it's over as well over a month. Yeah. It's well over a month away. Insane, insane. Well, no, it's, it's closer to six weeks. Yeah, long it? time, long time. Oh god. It, anyway, what a twat. So that that made me grumpy. <laughs> Um, and so I then did some testing of some MDCIs uh, that I haven't tested before. And it just put everything into mm-hmm. perspective because they're just lovely. Even if you don't adore the smell, they are all incredibly well crafted and beautifully made. And that. And the two that I tried, that I tried Les and Galant, which is a Cecile Z- uh, Zarokian which is a lovely, soft, mm-hmm. fuzzy, orange blossomy thing. It's very warm and fruity and spicy. And there's a, a lovely baked cinnamon note in there, but it's not gourmand in a sickly way. Just it, it's, it just was a really easy couple of days smelling rather lovely. So that was, it put mm. me back into a good mood. And then I tried uh, Keir Garamont, um, which is a Richard Ibanez. And it's a lovely spiced leather rose oud. It's very in a classical French style. I think it's the strongest leather of the house, but it still maintains a really soft and creaminess. And even though it's marketed for men, I would totally wear it. And Hmm. I kind of, I know that they do have a lot of leathers, but they do leather really well in MDCI. And I've been testing other leathers that I won't talk about, uh, did a bit of uh, Quiracy and uh, Quid de Lancome. And I came back to really enjoying the, the the style of leather in MDCI. It's very, very soft. Mm. Even when it's a, a stronger leather perfume, it's very, very soft and classy and just lovely. And it just I was just like, yeah, oh, this is a nice house. Well, that's that sounds like a much better experience. It really was. It really was. Um, and then... Very quickly, Ben will 
hate me. I, I tried Bengal Rouge by Papillon. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't really get on with it, to be honest. I found it so sweet and it, almost cloying. The myrrh in it was very, very sweet. And it just it got on my nerves a bit. And I was really sad. Hmm. Reeks of quality. I'm not say, not saying that, but just as a stylistic taste point, I I couldn't. And I had to. Wash You've had it a off. roller coaster week, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I had to wash like... it off, and I was really sad because I was thinking of Ben. I was like, oh, Ben is going to be really disappointed with me. <laughs> I do like to people please. Uh, I, I've... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't smelled it for ages. I, I when I I remember smelling it and it really like blowing yeah. my socks off and thinking it was really great. Um, but that was quite a long time ago. I mean, um, but I but I do remember really thinking like, wow, this was something mm. special. Um, the, uh, yeah, because I I smell it in a blind smell as well. Because I I years back I did a do you know um, Claire Spriggers uh, yeah uh, Sprigmore yeah um, yeah we, I did like a video with her where we sent each other like five. Um, little samples that were just numbered one to five, like mm. blind tests, and then and and then it was one of those that she'd sent me. So I had no idea what it was. It was just a number on a bottle, and I sprayed it. And I remember just thinking, like, this was fucking amazing. Um, but yeah, it well, was quite I, I think with um, those, right, as much as I really do do like them, great materials, uh, great kind of concepts. Again, whether they're just sort of borrowed from like you know a, a kind of love of like Golan and stuff like that. Uh, but they're just not as good in terms of like smoothness and stuff. Like they they smell uh, like they're indie, and that's fine. Um, but if you're used to kind of the the exact same sort of things, like your Shalimars and and whatever, uh, they're a lot smoother in terms of like sort of transitions between stuff. Do you know what I mean? Uh, whereas the, it's a bit more clunky. Uh, I still love them because they, you know, she uses loads of aris, loads of real sandalwood. Uh, the bergamot, I tend you tend to get really nice bergamot in indie perfumes, even though it might be quite fleeting or whatever, because it just kind of like they 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 don't sort of uh, like nuance it. It's just bam there, and you get a really nice like top note of like bergamot. Uh, and I recall that from being in that. Still like it. I still really like it, but I think it's slightly clunky and disjointed compared to like other you know classic perfumes and stuff that are really smoothly kind of vibe i've got one more that i don't mind not doing or you can just move to okay well um i mean i'll be honest for this um, i you, think you've, I've uh, had enough. you've gone go yeah i've fucking had enough yeah i, I want to know what it is now what was it what, what was, was what? this last one that she's going to talk about no bollocks. <laughs> it's ten, it's it's Tom Loren, which is Christopher Sheldon Drake, and it he it it predates Feminite du Bois um, when he was making it for uh, oh, Cide. Yeah. and you can smell the Feminite skeleton in there. It, it's it's. I'll talk about it next week. I won't do it this week. I'll talk about it next cool. week. I I, I yeah. Well, no, you won't. You won't talk about it at all. It's not it's not going to be allowed with uh, <laughs> Dasis Verboten. Um, we've uh, we've drawn a line under it. Um, okay, right. Well, I think we've all pussy-footed around this shit for long enough. Uh, it's uh, hang on, hang on. What is this? Ben looks like he's got something he wants. No, wait. To is say. that femininity to boy? As in, like, um, oh, what the fuck? So well, just, so, yeah, so we're so not talking. We're not yeah. talking. I like about that. Yeah, That's so, great. So basically, Femininity basically, really good perfume. Uh, t- Tom Duren was released in 1998. By ID Perfumes, but oh, it was made by Christopher Sheldrake. I told you. It's really, really reminiscent of Femme de Bois, which Sheldrake made with Pierre Boudon for Chicido in 1992 and then relaunched in 2009 for Serge Luton. And so this, re- oh, this predates both of them. I that history. Uh, well, not both of them, but the, it was the, there is a slight... Anyway, and it's it's really, really interesting to wear because it's, it's absolutely got the sketches of Feminite in there. Slightly spicier, there's a bit more carnation. The cedar is less pronounced. And interestingly, Rachel uh, K. Ng uh, told me recently that Maurice Roussel was the uncredited source for the cedar accord in Feminite. Um, so, and I can imagine this Tom Loren with that cedar accord, and it would be so close to Feminite as to be, well, I mean, he's... You can see Christopher Sheldrake basically kind of duping himself or exploring the work himself as, you know, 
with, with a perfume that he 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 he's obviously passionate about and making it more more times you know but perfumes do that they're always duping themselves and exploring more yeah. and i was so excited to get my hands on this bottle because it's more rare than <clears throat> the original feminite and i'm yeah i'm incredibly happy okay <laughs> um, sorry dad i i just like i do you know you know like um there, there comes a point uh, in parenting when you realise that you are just fucking powerless, right? Uh, and and, and, and the, uh, you know, the, the perception of authority is really all, all, all it is. Daddy's it's, hat it's just has a fucking off. mirage. That's what it is. Well, I <laughs> yeah, was happy not exactly. to talk about it. It's Ben's fault for no, asking you me more questions. No, you weren't. You, oh, yeah, just but this is what kids yeah, Sorry, you, bro. You, kids bicker and stuff between each other. You've got to, you know, corral yeah. us into get us in the back of the car, get us to shut the fuck up. Whoa. Yeah, you grubby, sticky fingered fuckers. <laughs> yeah. I I I am in charge here. I am now going to reassert my authority in, in some appalling way. Uh I don't know how exactly. Um I'm going to ask the aggressive sniffer himself to take us through the full fourteen because that's what we all tune in for, uh, James. You're going to be... Uh, this is going to do your head in, but it's... it's fi- Am I going to be underwhelmed? Well, no, you might be <laughs> overwhelmed because it's 15 this week. Oh, my uh, God. Uh, Dad is going to... Uh, Dad's head is exploding. <laughs> um, uh, or or I... If you are neither under nor overwhelmed, are you simply whelmed? I would say so, yeah. Yeah, very, okay. very well. Consider whelmed. me whelmed. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, right. So I wore uh, because it was immediately after the last recording of the podcast, uh, and I thought, hmm, what can I really, you know, start the week with with something a bit special? And I've got a, a vintage mini of Dior Poison. Mm. What do all you lot think about Dior Poison? Forget what I think. What do you guys think of it? Makes me want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to wear it because um, m- my husband's mum it was the only thing she wore, and she was very heavy-handed. So yeah. I'm not allowed to wear it. And I think, to be fair, that's a rule that probably should be universal. Um, should possibly get that into a statute of law somewhere. <laughs> what do you think, Dan? Uh, yeah, I. Um. Uh, so. Uh, I am ever so slightly anxious that I may be confusing it with um, uh, opium. Oh, okay. Uh, mm. Because uh, my mum definitely wore one of them, uh, but I think she wore opium more. I think everyone's mum definitely wore <laughs> one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fair. Um, so I'm going to plead the fifth, well, I think, my, my, on, on uh, poison. I mean, my, my thoughts on it were... Uh, it completely just like reminds me of the eighties. I think it reminds me of like like a t- teacher that I like fancied or something. I don't know. Um, as a small child, um, no. But it just reminds me of like women in the eighties or like nineties. Uh, and I fucking loved wearing it. To be honest, I thought it was amazing. Um, even mm. though it's such a familiar <laughs> smell, and it's not really something that I would necessarily seek out. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I I don't even really, I don't even feel sort of equipped to talk about what it actually smelled like. Uh, I just know that I felt uh, pretty sort of empowered. And it's weird because we were talking about like wearing kind of women's like perfumes and stuff. Uh, But I felt kind of like, yeah, I smell like a fucking, you know, a woman from the 80s. Like, get used to it, Um, you know. (laughs) But anyway, that, yeah, I just got this sort of uh, this get used to it because yeah, my name's massive Barbara. fucking shoulder yeah. pads. I came like in like this. Uh, no, anyway, nice. So, um, yeah, so anyway, then I wore a uh, Grossmith uh, Hasu no Hana because I found mm. the sample in my car. I know Dan loves it. I it fucking love brilliant. that perfume. What a brilliant perfume. It is epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Epic. fucking love it, man. Love it. Um, so yeah, it's that kind of like. Ilang, like powdery, but like really classy. Oh, it's just a stunner, isn't it? I'm gonna have to get that. I'm gonna have to get uh, it. 
Yeah, they, they, they're all marketed as being sort of exclusively feminine. But I I mean, to me, that's just so sort of classical um, and, and kind of androgynous as well. It, it, you could, it could just... It just smells great, and and you know, man, woman, fucking, or, or, or anywhere on the spectrum of fucking whatever's, yeah. uh, just any anyone will smell brilliant wearing just that. Just to revisit the little live chat that uh, Fliss and I did uh, earlier in the week, um, uh, we were talking about like transcending uh, gender rather than being like, mm. does it necessarily? It just doesn't. Just perfumes like that are just classic, and you know, we don't we don't yeah. even need to apply that stuff to it. Um, but yeah, just absolutely fantastic. Anybody who smells of that, like, just is like, you know, immediately just cool and great and nice. Uh, so yeah, then I wore uh, Chanel Platinum Ego East because I know loads of people hate it. Yes, loads of people hate it. Oh, I you love it. it. Good for you. Good for you, I Dan. Fucking we love can it. Bond. I we love can it. Bond over uh, fucking Platinum Ego East. My 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 mum bought it for me accidentally. Um, I'd asked her to buy me a bottle of Egoist, and she bought me Egoist Platinum. But it, as it turned out, it's still so great. It. it was apparently apparently a notorious Big's uh, signature oh, scent. Oh, really? Wow. Well, if mm. Biggie Smalls says so, then uh, you know exactly. I'm down. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's people hate the metallicness of it, uh, the kind of herbal weirdness, but it's got this kind of like effervescence. It's like it's very strange. I can understand the opening like people not being down with it. It's a little bit like a really classy Dom Perignon version of um, uh, Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce, which is actually made by Lord mm. Miel, uh, funnily enough. And also... Was it? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think in collaboration with another perfumer from wherever he worked at the mm. time, but that was one of his big like hits. Um, which, which, I mean, like, you know, that is a kind of really loud frat boy ridiculous kind of thing this is a bit more refined chanel again that i think it, it predates uh fierce do you know what i mean um so this this mm. arrived before that but a similar kind of herbal vibe with that like clary sage or whatever uh and that sort of like metallic -y kind of nurse but with like a, a sort of a bit of like fougere but then the dry down of it is so good and it's so like this is another men's classic that is just overlooked because it's kind of green and sharp and weird and metallic in the in the opening but just give it a chance give it a chance uh and it mm. and it really will like reward you later on because it's an unsung hero of the sort of you know chanel kind of things and totally it's superb yeah and, i'm gonna and have to get my bottle out now uh well not right this minute but uh i shall get it out and wear that tomorrow i think it, it is an absolute fucking uh stupendous perfume but it also predates the sort of use of heavy-handed kind of uh metallic uh sort of vibes you know like that whole quentin bish sort of metallic thing that he's doing yeah, now yeah, yeah. this it's 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 much it's a it's a much more bearable version of that i think sure. you know the, the metallicness it may have been very avant-garde at the time but by today's standards it's actually very easy going I yeah think. it's not as spiky as it's not as eh, 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 you know uh sort of tinny mm. and stuff so then yeah i wore uh 4160 tuesdays hush hush edp which was very kindly sent to me by uh claire uh smurfy girly um i didn't like it uh i'll be honest um because uh i i felt um again in that same way that i mentioned about sort of like slightly disjointed it wasn't a straight up elegant sort of uh violet or this kind of palmer violet like playful thing that i was expecting yes it does have that of course it has those elements it's not like horrible dry woody iron either it's very it does have quite quite a nice uh violet but it's somewhere within it i found it more resinous and sort of like too too heavy and not I d again i don't exactly know what the brief was but i found it just a little bit just lacking something for me and uh you know as much as i hate to say it because i love violet perfumes i uh, i love the the brand uh 4160 tuesdays and sarah and claire and you know i i want to say nice things about it but i just didn't like it uh and it, i don't think it's i think well i don't know if it is taste it just something about it just didn't 
wasn't right. <laughs> and I can't really put my finger on what it, uh, the, tr the truth of the matter. Just like I was really looking wow. forward to... No, I was really expecting to look forward to having it and going, oh, this would be this lovely, like, powdery violet thing. And I don't know, it just became a bit uh, lumpen and sort of heavy on skin and didn't really... <laughs> lumpen. lumpen. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, that's a great word. Um, well, as someone who's been on the receiving end of your uh, uh, critiques as well, uh, James, I, I think I can probably say, um, you know, we all, and, and, and I, I don't class myself as a creator or, or anything, you, you know that, but you did kindly review my my perfumes and told me they were broadly <laughs> shit. Um, and uh, and uh, I, I think we all appreciate your well, honesty. Well, you know what? I think um, I've revisited... You I, bastard. Well, no, I think I've revisited one of those, and you might get a pleasant surprise one day on Instagram or on here. When... <laughs> one day, <laughs> if, if you're lucky. No, well, you know, I, like I say, I tried them sort of in haste. I, d I don't think I was horrible about them. Some of them were, were all right. Um, I just you told me you hated. Oh well, them. I did. I didn't like. Maybe I maybe I didn't connect <laughs> with them or whatever. Um, but <laughs> it, it's I'm, all right. I I, 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 I don't. Uh, so I, I've I've been uh, you know uh, noodling around this whole fucking uh, thing for long enough. I, I you know I say this whole thing, but the fragrance uh, reviewing scene. I, I I know that you can't fucking say you love something just because we're mates and 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 I'm, I'm sure claire would feel exactly the same uh, way yeah, so exactly you know, you uh, just call it as yeah. you see it well i'm glad i'm glad you feel that way can i hijack your 14 yeah, quickly as well because i i've been wearing this and and i didn't mention it but um you said about violet perfumes uh what parfum, is it it's sp parfum sven pritz oh, yeah. collet um uh it's like a, he's an indie guy from... Is he? Polish like or something? Eastern yeah. European somewhere. I, like I'm, Polish, something I'm like sure James has mentioned these before. Yeah. Um, violet Moss. And this is like big Palmer Violet. It's just when James mentioned it being Palmer Violet, it struck out to me like, oh, yeah, I wore this yesterday. And um, it's just a bastard sweet Palmer Violet, but mixed with like dirty Ooh. earth. And it's majestic. And it's supposed to be. Um, it's like the brief was like... Um, his uh, holidays to the south of France when he was a child, I think. Um, to me, it just smells like massive sweet Parma violets, properly crushed Parma violets as well. It's no hiding it. But then with this like dirty, earthy kind of chewy bit underneath it, it's sounds, sounds really great. good. I'll um I'll send some next time we send things. Um, cool. But yeah, it's great. Anyway, uh, sorry. Right. Um, so that, that <laughs> okay. Well. Let's move okay, on. So then I wore a uh, Frederick Mal uh, Bigarad Concentri uh, because I was feeling a kind of orangey, sort of like fresh kind of mood. Uh, just great. Kind of got this like weird sort of juxtaposition with like hay and kind of mate and stuff like that. So it's got this sort of like more body, but with this kind of zesty, like, I mean, you know, uh, Jean-Claude Elena makes like amazing... Um, uh, orange perfumes, doesn't he? Then on that theme, I wore an orange the next day, which was the. Z oh, hang on, sorry. Oh, no, I just wanted to interrupt you. Oh, on go on, that. go on. There's a uh, there's a new Jean Claude Elena for Frederick Oh Mal. yeah, news, news flash. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heaven, heaven can wait. Yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about it, uh, but Rich Mitch sent me a picture of it. So, yeah. uh, but it's uh, JCE for uh, uh, for Mal. Yeah, yeah. I was might might be I good. I was talking to um, Anna. Uh, can't remember her handle on. She's a lovely uh, Spanish lady, and she was saying, "Oh well, um, I was at um, Essence, like talking to uh, Jean Claude Lena, and he never told me about it." <laughs> I was like, mm. "Well, I, oh, right. no." She she said, uh. "Oh, he's got a secret." in the in the pipeline and i was like well that'll be uh, it that'll be it won't it you know what i mean like as soon as as soon as anyone tells me well i was at essence and i say well go fuck yourself <laughs> then yeah i was rubbing Cause, uh, shoulders because i'm not uh, bitter you know, master perfumers <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what you sound like you wanker <laughs> so yeah so so right. so anyway the, in contrast to that so jean-claude elena's kind of hmm. oh i sit and meditate for a while and think about an orange and you know look at it and all that kind of shit and like smell the piff for like fucking weeks on end or whatever he does uh and no one says piff <laughs> 
No, no one says pith no. at all. That's like a made up word. <laughs> okay, then. Um, so the, I wore the zoo. Uh, smile and shine. Mm. Ding. Which I like because uh, it's a kind of throwaway. It's a bit like Clinique Happy, but it's got kind of those uh, azonic, uh, aquatic kind of like things that uh, those kind of floralizey things that. Um, that Lord of Miel loves to put in his own perfumes for the zoo. It's really bright and like electric, as Ben was saying about that. But it's got this lovely, again, a complete contrast to the Bigger Art Concentre. Both actually mm. very good orange notes uh, or accords or whatever you want to call it. Very, uh, like say, very different styles. Both equally as enjoyable as each other. So I had two days just, you know, languishing in fucking orange. Uh, and it was great. Nice. So then I wore Golan, Lair Um Samsara, which we all got a sample of from yes. Rich Mitch. So I will ask you guys, what did you think of it? Uh, Have you tried it yet or not? I found it savage. Ooh, savage. <laughs> Good savage, bad savage. I, I, uh, incredibly clean aldehyde top super spicy and soapy that mint on the top of it yeah. though is almost nasal cleansing savage it's really wow. fucking lutely savage i loved it and i found it maybe because i love samsara so much i was expecting it to be a lot more lair of the thing i love as opposed to the thing i love just like sitting in a bowl of mint yeah i think toothpaste i think later on it does have more of the samsara it goes a little bit yeah. like creamier and like goes into that sort of sandalwood like but, but i found but but the mint just stayed on on my skin anyway it just didn't stop and even when the creaminess was underneath it then it was just sort of like it went from toothpaste to shaving foam and toothpaste yeah i got quite a like i don't again this could be you know skin chemistry another thing that i fucking hate when people say that but anyway uh yeah it's like <laughs> there, there's differences on skins but if to me i got like quite a like powdery sort of carnation after that opening yes which is very like it, it's sort of like green like you say kind of uh bright and then it goes to you get this like i only got a slight mintiness but i thought it was a real welcome like thing because i'm not necessarily somebody who, who would say i like mintiness in perfume but i do love i like i do love a few really minty perfumes but anyway yeah i i found that that sort of settled down and it went more to like a carnation sort of vibe which i love and samsara which i've had vintage bottles of and sold stupidly uh mm. but i would definitely i always think about samsara and go why did i why did i get rid of that because i never really used to wear it but i'd be like I, I probably want to again, um, but like I had like a really good like you know sort of early like uh, EDP or whatever they were, uh, and I now I really regret like not having it anymore. So I thought it was a good flanker. I thought it was decent. On, on just on the subject of toothpastey perfumes, did I mention the weird experience I had when I posted a review of uh, a geranium? Um, pour on you, the Frederick Mal geranium pour on or pour monsieur or whatever no, it's called. No, I didn't know. The uh, so it's a so I, I it's a Dominic Ropion um, for Frederick Mal and and I posted a review saying it was like uh, it's a bit kind of smells a bit like toothpaste. Anyway, someone claiming to be Dominique Ropion, then started fucking trolling me on Instagram, sending me all sorts of abusive shit, and then mining my content and fucking, uh, you know, pulling out various bits to have a go at me about and stuff. And weird. it turns out... Well, it turns, <laughs> it turns out there, that there is a person who literally has the, 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 the Instagram handle Dominique Ropion that is not Dominique Ropion, but basically goes around getting offended on behalf of the real Dominique <laughs> Ropion and, and being, like, really abusive to people. It's like, for fuck's sake, I didn't even give it a bad review. I just said it was a bit toothpasty, which Which is, is actually the inspiration oh, for that perfume. Do you know that? No, I the didn't know that. Uh, so, in it, fact, that should be a compliment. Yeah, is uh, is toothpaste and mouthwash, and the idea that that is quite a an outrageous, ridiculous thing to put in a perfume 
well, let's do it. And obviously, geranium already has those minty facets anyway, uh, and it very much like amplifies them. But to be to be perfectly honest, when I first tried it, I was like, nah, this is not me. And then I'm in love with it, and it's my favorite mal. So you know, oh really? Absolutely, my favorite uh, Frederick mal. I didn't know. I yeah, did not it know. It took that. over from. Well, I probably should have. Uh, French that. lover, which was my previous favorite. They're they're both up there. Do Bo- you know what I mean? Bordon. Yeah, they're both they're both up there. Uh, uh but but i think geranium poor arm i just i i just love it i just love it i think it's great i need i need to revisit the geranium poor arm but uh yeah to be honest this uh uh faux ropion character left such a sour <laughs> fucking taste in my mouth i'm not sure i'll bother well uh anyway right of, how many more have we got, got a few more i'll get through them quick don't worry <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're halfway through um so uh, then I wore uh, Atelier Matier, Materi uh, Cacao Porcelana, which mm. is, um, I mean, I came home and Jenny was like, you smell like chocolate. And I was like, well, that's the intent of the perfume. So there you go. Um, it's a kind of very chocolatey, uh, you know, big, like uh, f- floral, but chocolatey. Uh, I don't know, is it like iris and uh, cow and uh, florally kind of notes? Uh, not very good. Um, yeah, so not not it's not very good. It's a great perfume. It's very well made and all that. Not quite my scene, I would say, but very good nonetheless. And uh, I, I didn't hate it. I you know reasonably enjoyed it. But I think they're a great brand and they're all really high quality and nice ideas Ooh. you know and and worth a sniff so uh, i you know i it, it yeah so we were talking about that kind of semi gourmand thing maybe this would even be classed as a full gourmand uh but i think there's enough of that floral like moogler type vibe i always say that but moogler's got loads of different kind of diverse sort of perfumes but it's that big heavy uh thing with like a chocolatey kind of thing probably patchouli as well uh, really good, really quality materials, excellent. Uh, then I wore a Zagorsk by uh, Comme des Garçons, which is mm. a wonderful, uh, it's got that hinoki uh, pine uh, kind of like really sort of, the, the actual writing on it is green and it's quite a green, uh, yeah, sort of evocative thing. I get more sort of Buddhist kind of, uh, you know, temple than, you know, Russian Orthodox Church or something like that. Uh, but I, I don't know Zagorsk. It's a place in it, so I don't know if it's accurate to wh- whatever it's supposed to be. But they're all great incenses, those, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so thoroughly enjoyable day. Uh, then I wore Hermes 24 Faubourg, which I know uh, Ben is a big fan of. Uh, it's coming into like springtime, perfect time to wear this perfume. It's actually heavier than I often give it like credit for because it kind of starts off really bright and like spangly and, you know, floral and, and all that kind of like good sort of stuff. And then it's quite relentless and turns to quite a sort of heavy body, like uh, sheeper-esque kind of a powdery thing, but really quite strong, uh, to be honest. And I love it. I love it. It's probably one of the most feminine perfumes that I own. But again, I actually, when I wear it, I rejoice and go, yeah, this is my day for like smelling quite feminine and it not being a kind of barrier to me, like loving this perfume. Because it sometimes is, I'll be, I'll be honest. Uh, so anyway, mm. then I wore, which I didn't know at the time, but I've since found out. So I just kind of blindly picked up that Kazemi, which uh, Rich Mitch also sent to us. Shout out to Rich Mitch. Um, which mm. is by House of Matriarch, apparently. Uh, and when I first sprayed it on a strip, I went, oh, my God, that is an intensely rosy, uh, rose absolute laden perfume from an indie perfumer because I kind of could sort of tell uh, because it's not very, uh, what's the word? I don't know, sort of uh, crafted. Refined. Well, no, it's not even about refined. I, I, it is quite refined because when I put it on my skin, I found it more resinous. So it's got this really like heavy sort of uh, resin vibe, but it's a huge rosy perfume. And to be fair to the lady, can't remember it. Christine is she called 
Christina. Christi- Christy Michelle. Uh, to be fair to her, it's a really bloody good rose. Uh, and yeah, just very like faceted, loads of like resins in it, like I say. Uh, and that's what kind of came through, which was interesting. Because when I first smelled it, I was like, yeah, this is a... Not that rose is one-dimensional, because it's probably one of the most complex like florals that there is. But like it had that quality of like you know this is not hugely interesting perfume even though it's really good quality and whatever but then when i actually wore it i was like no this is fantastic people were telling me it smelled kind of middle eastern which clearly you know rose does but i got lots more resinous qualities from it so i think i thought it was brilliant to be honest uh and well worth the probably really expensive uh price tag uh but if you want a really authentic uh rose that's also got these nice resiny uh facets uh, i thought it was great mm. um so anyway then i wore it is very ro- it is very very rosy <laughs> yeah. it's got like seven seven different roses oh, um it's very uh, spicy according to uh, well. i'm just doing it now it's like uh yeah it's nice it is, it is nice um I can't see me ever wearing it. No. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's interesting, but uh, ultimately uh, it's a no from okay. me. Okay. Uh, anywho. anywho, so with them we've got uh, Yves Saint Laurent, L'Homme Libre Cologne Tonic. Does anyone know this? Oh, no, I don't. It sounds like it should be good. Uh, do you know what? It is good. Um, there's one called Libra, which they made, which is a violet perfume. So it's a, one of those kind of cool, like, men's violets that they were making in sort of mid-2000s, maybe, uh, that were like, oh, yeah, like, there's quite a lot of violet perfumes around. Uh, and then they go away, and then they kind of come back. You know, it's it's that sort of thing. But it's, it's very much, it's got, like, a kind of gin, like, effervescent sort of gin and tonic quality to it, but with violet. Uh, and it's called tonic and it smells a bit like tonic um and really nice lasts very well uh just a a bit of a throwaway perfume you know what i mean because it's a it's a lom flanker uh, a lot of which are shit by the way um but this is a good one um and yeah i i really do uh, i mean probably can't fucking get it anymore and some twats probably trying to get like 200 quid a bottle for it but uh, it was a throwaway kind of like wasn't very popular at the time, so maybe you can get it for a decent price. But I would recommend it; it's pretty good. Uh, then we've got Crisia Moods, which is also from Rich Mitch. So I've been kind of raiding the Rich Mitch. Uh, um, I've tried that before. That's very old school sort of uh, thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I don't like it uh, particularly. Uh, I think it's got good qualities in terms of like. The, the base and it's got some of those 80s men's things but it's being kind of overshadowed with loads of like this kind of linalolly uh like bergamot uh and like lavender like uh dihydromersonol kind of like thing that but, but also like warm fougere kind of element that make this kind of uh, like icky sort of thing to begin with and then once it's dried down after a few hours it becomes like much more palatable and, and better. Uh, and, and that's like a deep perfume. Do you know what I mean? It's got all these different kind of things to it. Um, but like that opening and that first like start bit to me just screams cheap and tacky, unfortunately. Um, but I think that was maybe perfumes that came later that gave that that vibe a bad name because this was kind of 80s. So it kind of, it was probably mm. quite, oh, this is like slightly outside of, your normal really leathery spicy powerhouse type vibe so yeah i mean it's okay uh then i wore um and so then i got so annoyed with that uh because of the opening even though it dried down better uh i actually i can't remember what i did on saturday but i had like a wash in the middle of the day so i must have done something uh and then um i wore yeah uh Guerlain, uh, I can't remember the fucking name of it. Um, it was in those Parisiennes, and it's also another... Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, uh, what is it called? I'll have, sorry, I'll have to... I don't know. Yeah, it's, what is it uh, called? Hang on. It's a girl Anne as well, so I can't even like... <laughs> Sh- Shamad. Shamad. 
Oh, Shamad. Shamad. Which one? The the original uh, no. women's or the, no. the poor, poor on re-release? re-release uh, in the... Have you got yeah, that? Yeah, I do, yeah. Have you got, the bo- have you got a bottle yeah, of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I love it. I love it. I think it's really classy. Again, with the violets, man. It's really violety. Mm. Uh, very nice, like, men's floral uh, accord. Kind of green. Kind of... Uh, yeah, slightly spicy, and then sort of le- like slightly leathery, powdery, dry down. Very nice, obviously in the same f- sort of family, roughly as as Derby. I mean, it's no fucking Derby, is it? But like, it's pretty damn good, and uh, I love it. So I wore that to bed last night and was like, mm, "This is really nice." Uh, then last one. Sorry for taking so long. Uh, it's Essential Parfums, mm. The Musk, which uh, is wonderful and i'm literally can just smell it now and i'm just sat here like in heaven with this thing it's kind of slightly rosy slightly um beeswax honey like tinged but it's it's kind of almost got got Uh. some like white musk like thing to it but it's got like really fuzzy musk to it. it is just gorgeous you sent us a little sample of that when we did the Musk Do About Nothing episode, oh, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. And I remember really liking it. And it was between that and the Moogler uh, over the Musk uh, one uh, as to which one I was going to go invest my time and energy in locating. Yeah. And it was the Moogler. That, it was the Moogler that won it for me. But it was, it, it, you know, my recollection is it's a super... For 65 perfume. quid, um, 65 quid, you cannot go wrong. I, uh, no, I agree. I think the essential parfums are doing a very nice line in highly affordable stuff. Um, okay, uh, I am uh, just you know bowled over by how long we've been yapping. Um, it feels like an extra long first uh, half. So, um, unless anyone's got any burning, yearning desire to fucking offload some bullshit, I suggest we wrap it the fuck up. And we will be back in just a couple of minutes with the next part of Les Odrens. Stick with us. Okay, and welcome back to part two of Les Odrens. Uh, this week we are talking about things that we hate. Uh, I mean, this is, after all, Les Odor Rants. It's ranty about odors. And uh, that's how we came up with the name, by the way. Um, so, you know, this should be our special... Oh, my God, I just got that! <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know whether he's joking. <laughs> I think he is. Good. Right. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, this should be our specialist subject, shit that we hate. Um, and I, I don't know, I've like prepared a whole fucking arsenal of, you know, a whole catalogue of things that I hate. We're going to obviously keep it loosely perfume related, you know. Oh, I hate fascism. Isn't that really interesting, is it? But, um, but, you know, unless there's perfumery fascism. I don't know. Something tells me that Ben is the right place to start here. You know, Ben, ben has good form for ranting about all sorts of things from Roger Dove to Memo to fucking, you know, who knows? Ben. Where do you want to start? Well, I've got some notes. <laughs> I bet you well, do. Yeah, so I, I, I'll open the floor to you. I'll put it right back. I've got some notes, and they're basically like my three things that I've written down. And and one of them looks like a sort of title of an essay, and the other one is is sort of, sort of more simple and a lot less philosophical. So which one do you want to go with? Should we go straight in hard with the essay? essay. Yes, yeah. essay. Okay. Boom. So the first thing that I hate is the casual misogyny and sad desperation of compliment hunters and the cuntish YouTubers that propagate. Yes! Yes! <laughs> so that's a sort of a two-parter, right? So we'll start off with the fact that, firstly, let's get this straight right now, right? Compliments are nothing more than social lubrication. They are as important as when you say some to someone in the morning, you're all right. The other person says, yes. <laughs> And then we move on with our day. When someone says to you, you smell nice, that's it. 
It's not because they fancy you. It's not because they think you're like you're you're really clever at collecting perfume. It's not any, <laughs> you're any oh, sort you're of you're really clever of anything. <laughs> yeah, but that's what these sad fuckers want, right? They want they they feel like it's a reflection of themselves. And when someone says, "Oh, you look good," and so that like, firstly, we need to iron that out, right? And just say compliments mean fuck and all. And the fact that you think it is means that you're more of a loser than me and believe me that saying <laughs> that you're such a fucking loser i just it's it's unreal if you <laughs> devote that much of your life to have like just a brief social interaction with someone where they say you smell nice and that fucking means that you spend hundreds of pounds well for that, you fucking uh, uh, fucking hell ben hey, <laughs> hey don't self-deprecate yeah yeah <laughs> well so this part one should we tweet <laughs> there's quite a bit to unpack there right and and uh, you know is. and i'm i'm gonna make a a marginal you know a, a fairly sort of loose defense of uh the compliment um I, I think everybody enjoys getting a compliment it's nice to be told that you smell nice it's far better than being told you smell fucking disgusting or or, or whatever and, but it doesn't mean anything. well like if someone if equally if they'll, they'll say oh you smell nice it's the easiest thing for them to grab onto they could equally just say, "Oh, I like your hair today." Well, do you know what I mean? Like, but, it's... but I think it's a little more than you're right. I mean, I'm I'm absolutely there with you. It does not mean yes, I want to fuck you, right? Uh, which which I think is and and that's. Uh, the that, problem yeah, with because it all, because right? you, you talk about the casual misogyny that is absolutely yeah. right. There is this whole sort of fuck boy mentality, which is like, yeah, man, I'm gonna get these. I don't know why they're they're all American. There's a lot of Americans do it, but but <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, man. It's, it, they're, they're the British <laughs> pricks are just as bad. Don't worry. But but this 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 idea that um you know the right perfume will somehow overcome your. F- turgid absence of personality and and your fucking appalling dress sense and and will somehow i don't know get you laid by magic it, it's mm. just it's pure misogyny and and it's bullshit and and it, it actually you know these simps who are fucking buying perfumes on the basis that this is somehow gonna get me fucking laid it's the most base and mm. pointless fucking thing it, it, it completely undermines anything artistic or positive about perfume in my view so I, i'm right there with That's, you yeah I, yeah you articulate it in a much better way than me like like it, it's it's you know, I'm just ranting, but like you're saying exactly what like like it's the sadness of it all that it is sad. You know, like I oh, do you, you really you will, will spend this much money and d- d- devote all this sort of effort just so that someone might. Say well, you smell I, nice, I, you I, fucking I, I it's always nice when someone says you smell nice, and 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 funnily enough, my uh, my 16 year old daughter. Uh, wears a lot of perfumes, a lot of my perfumes, and she says she gets a lot of compliments, and she likes getting the compliments because she's the girl who always smells nice. It does not mean anything more than that, and and I think that's where you're right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's yeah. it's maybe a little harsh to sort of it, it just dis, you know dismiss it as social lubricant, uh, you know, as transactional as saying good morning. Or how are you doing? But it is, but, it, but you know, like, people will equally say, like, oh, you know, uh, your hair looks nice. Or, you know, like, they might see your tattoo sound and say, oh, nice tattoo. Mm. Or, you know, oh, you got new shoes. Do you know what I mean? It's just, they're just, like, they're nice it, the, aren't they? They're pleasantries. You keep saying and, hair. And, yeah. It's the you idea that someone's going to drop a panty. It's the oh, panty. you that, said it. Someone says you smell yeah. nice. Doesn't mean they're going to drop their panties for <laughs> you. So. Actually, yeah. but <laughs> actually, I've got this story. Uh, you know, there was this time when, um, yeah, I was wearing, uh, yeah, it was a Louis Vuitton thing, and all these women, they just kept removing their underwear and throwing them at me. And, and guys, hey, guys, if you want to get laid, get this perfume, <laughs> for which I'm getting a 20% kickback. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, and and this is like the so that this is the second part is the huntish YouTubers that are propagating this. And it's like they're basically just lumps of matter. <laughs> 
and they sit there on these cameras knowing that the fact that, that perfume is a niche subject and they, they would fail fantastically if they tried to do style or beauty because they're neither stylish or attractive. And they sit there going, oh, like smell this perfume. It will make the women love you because apparently... I'm a female and I this and I, and, and I like Bleu de Chanel and, and, and now I'm going to make top tens of Bleu de Chanel and Yves Saint Laurent Y and, and tell you that women will love it and they're just and, it, and you just think fuck A stop it like you're, you're propagating an awful stereotype B you know fuck all about perfume and don't get me wrong we on this perfume podcast you know, freely admit that we're amateurs right we're just amateur sniffers and that's about it but fucking hell, these people, they don't even like perfume. Mm. This is the thing. They cannot like perfume if they're just pro- like pushing out top 10 after top 10 of Bleu de Chanel and Yves Saint Laurent Y. You don't like perfume. Stop it. You've gone into boots. You've smelt the counter and then you've made a 10 out of that. And you're just going to keep pushing that over and over again in different tops which show off a bit of your flabby cleave <laughs> so that you can make some sort of semblance of a wage out of teenage boys who are getting driven this like say this casual misogyny like it's it's okay and it's green light yeah. in casual yeah. misogyny to young got guys my that, got my blur de chanel I've got, and and I'll, I'll, yeah, i've got I, my andrew tate video so i'm um, yeah that, that's I, me sorted i've kind of yeah yeah i've kind of forgotten what i was going to say now um <laughs> uh, uh, uh basically yeah one uh you keep going on about hair compliments uh bald guy in the room oh, it's a hairdresser, hairdresser uh, I, you know, only, like it's just <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm fucking with you it's all right uh i you know it's it's gone it's fine um and then what did... Uh, well, they might complain you on your beard, James. You know what I mean? That's like, true. That's another kind of... Or oh, my back hair, maybe. Uh, <laughs> if I'm in a swimming pool or... Yeah, you know... Hey, buddy. Hey, um, buddy. Nice back yeah. hair. Uh, or they might go, uh, <laughs> flabby cleavage or whatever you said. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, basically... Um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, so just to slightly... Uh, a little bit of devil's advocate, right? That I think smell could potentially be the icing on top of the cake of the... I get the casual misogyny and all that stuff, but I think, like, smelling good it could be that extra little, like, fucking 5% or whatever that might just might just make you slightly more attractive. Again, I don't subscribe to this particularly because I don't think people are that focused on it, but certainly I think against smelling, like, bad... Uh, you know, clearly there's a preference, but I think if you just didn't smell of anything particularly, and maybe just your own smell might be more attractive. I don't know. I'm just, anyway, I uh, don't know what point I, I'm trying to make. I, yeah. I, I think I get the point that you're making, which is that, you know, in, in social interactions, then people might actually place some value on, does the other person smell nice? And 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 I yeah. think I think to some extent people probably do, but it's... It's it's you know I I like having a conversation with someone who smells nice and 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 that's cool but it doesn't mean that they're gonna get laid because they smell nice and that's that's really I guess the 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 point so I, I think you know Ben Ben's kind of hyperbole not notwithstanding uh, I mean broad. Oh, yeah. I mean, my rant there is I'm also very well aware of the irony of my own misogyny by calling out these ugly YouTubers, uh, <laughs> you know. So, like, you know, like I, it's all just a bit of a kind of tongue-in-cheek mm. ranty joke. Yeah. But at its core, I think what I'm getting at is, way, you know, is, yeah, that it's I, just... I, I think this is... I, the the thing wrong... that annoys me, though, is is the, the large number of female influencers who do the same thing, mm. and they have a, a key a core audience of men and they will pump out the top five fragrances that women love the top 10 uh, fragrances that women will just follow you around and i'm just like babe Mm. really come on can you not see what you're doing yeah that is like another layer underneath it it's like the casual misogyny of of the concept of that and the the guys that are doing it but when female influencers kick it up a notch or bolster it I, that really just makes me that's just that's just for cash isn't it you just want to you're monetizing this video and you know what you're doing and you're standing there in a bra and you are feeding mm, the monster yeah well I, done, I, love. I, well so, done love go on james just, just on the smell the smell and attraction thing right 
we did this uh, 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 JJ's live stream thing the other day, and I thought of a kind of anecdote about that. Like, I had a perfume vial in my pocket, and I thought this guy smelled really nice, but a perfume vial had just leaked in my pocket. And I was thinking, wow, what a legend. Like, he stinks of this, like, really jasmine-y sort of perfume. Like, he came from a meeting in my office, and I was going, oh, wow, that's, like, amazing. Uh, and it was me <laughs> all along. <laughs> and I just had a perfume thing leak in my pocket. But anyway, I had a kind of dirtier, more sort of Les Odorants kind of one, uh, where I went on a first date. This is a bit like one of... Like, see, you, you're of saving the good oh, stuff for is, us, eh, James? Is, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this starts off nice, you know, and it's to do with perfume and attraction. Well, no, to do with smell and attraction, certainly not fucking perfume when you hear this. And it's bizarre. I don't know what my thought process was. I don't know what's going on. But I went on the first date and, it, you know, it all went very well and stuff and, like, got in the car afterwards and we'd been for, like, a walk in some, like, woodland or something. And, um, as you do, uh, and, yeah, you know, we were getting on fine and everything. I thought, oh, how's this going with her? Is she, like, you know, uh, you know, are you going to get a bit of a kiss at the end or whatever? And then I was sat in my car and I was like, stinks of shit in it. <laughs> like, it actually smells like, sh- like human shit, right? <laughs> And I was thinking all the time, I was talking to her, we are doing a bit of like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, like, you know, it went like well and stuff. And I was thinking, has she shat? Right? I was honestly thinking, right, has she has she shat herself? Because, and and the, the daft thing was, we kind of leaned in, and I still, I still kind of got off with her, right? Like, of course uh, she did. And I was thinking the whole time, I was thinking the whole time, like, oh my God, she, like she stinks of shit. And then uh, she got out of the car and I was like, yeah, yeah, see you later. And she went and like got in her car or whatever. And I was sat there and I was like, oh, it still stinks of shit. Oh, it's me. And I trodden in dog shit. <laughs> so I was like... <laughs> She must have been thinking. She must have been thinking exactly the same thing about me. And she still fucking got off with me. So I was like, she can't be. We're both not too fussy. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, not too fussy. It was just weird that my head went to like, she shat herself. Like, she's in my car and she, why had she pooed herself? You know what I mean? Bizarre. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my fucking God. That's your first anyway. thought. Your first thought is not like, oh, no, maybe I've stood in a dog. No, no, she must no. have shit her no. pants. That is fucking genius. You, uh, yeah. Would you describe... I only ever shit myself once. In my life. <laughs> I, 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 and it wasn't on a first date. Oh, God. Like, can I just say, for the record, I've never shit myself as an adult. Right? You say you say only once, as though that's some sort of fucking achievement. That, that, that's not an achievement, though. Ben. Go on, share with us. Share with us. Wow. Oh, I was just really drunk, and um, I don't remember anything about it. I just remember feeling a bit queasy on the bus and thinking I should probably get off of this. And it was like the last bus home. I don't remember how I got home, but then I just remember the next day, and there was just. It was carnage, and I had to go to the I had to go to the laundromat before my parents woke up to wash my trowel because I was just embarrassed. Oh my god! Uh, I would say I was only like seventeen or eighteen or something. This uh, this this yeah. this episode is not going how I expected. Everyone's done it, haven't they? This surely. Is this is taking a turn, isn't it? Oh dear. Okay. So, right. Fliss, have Reset. you ever, have Plassy. you ever shut your pants? Uh, just, I mean. Get in touch. (laughs) Let us know if you've ever shat yourself at home. Or have you ever stood in a dog shit and thought that maybe uh, someone else had shat their pants? (laughs) What the fuck? Anyway, right, so I would like to... I'd like to try and compose myself slightly. Um, Oh, God. No, I've got to stop laughing. I don't feel well now. Um... (laughs) It's, it's all the talk of shit. Uh, and if you're listening to this over breakfast, I do apologise. Um, so I want to sort of extend uh, your uh, your thing about the casual misogyny and, and all that of the YouTubers. For me, the thing that grinds my gears um, is sort of segueing on, on the, uh, this idea of people who don't really know anything about perfume is this... Um, is, is the sort of self-appointed influencers who basically just deliberately uh, colonise um, perfumery as a sort of means to to sort of develop clout or, or, or whatever. And I think, you know, the, 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 the reality for me is that perfume, um, if, it's not, if it's not something that you are sort of uh, moved 
uh, you know, by some sort of love of, of perfumery to get into the whole reviewing and influencing or whatever, however you want to describe it. But if that's not your primary motivation, then basically I fucking hate you. Right, it, it's it's the people who uh, uh, who see it simply as a um, a social media niche to sort of uh, colonize. Those are the people that get on my fucking nerves, and I won't name any of them other than ah. other than <laughs> other than. The, oh, nice. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, I have a personal issue with uh this guy who calls himself the school of scent um and he is an egg-headed cunt and uh <laughs> and, and and honestly uh if if he's out there if he's listening i challenge you to some sort of fucking duel like pistols the whole nine yards i i fucking i reckon right my mate went to see do you know that kind of thing it's like ufc but they wear like knights like gear and they actually hit each other with like real swords and shit nice yeah. You should do that. Yeah. I'm 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 bang up for it. Um I think you're battering. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like at least fourteen times the size of him. So um I'm up for it. Yeah, with his soft fucking surgeon's hands or whatever. Well, uh yeah, no, just <laughs> what an obnoxious fucking tool bag. But he is everything that's wrong uh, about perfume. All the reviews are like this is how many hours performance I get and this is how many compliments I get. And this is how many women wanted to have sex with me. The answer's none, because you're a cunt, and nobody wants to have sex with a cunt. So, What, what I love about the language you used uh, when you were introducing that, you said uh, colonised <laughs> like a few times, like he's bacteria. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. Con- conquistador or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's imperialist kind of <laughs> fucking uh, connotations. Uh, it's, I, I find it, it's incredibly poor taste, I think, uh, because uh, what what's sort of unique about perfume uh, as uh, as opposed to many other i guess collector uh, collectible um uh, niches or whatever that people might get into is the the sort of art the artfulness of it and i think um you know sure it's a business and and sure you know perfumery is 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 a commercial endeavor like anything else but it can't solely be a commercial endeavor if it's only a commercial endeavor then it's 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 got no more soul than fucking i don't know collecting I, fucking I, I, I don't know pictures of dirt it's just ugh. but i think it is a commercial mm. endeavor for him yeah, because I've, if you look he's got 127k followers he's only following well i blocked people, him and he's only done yeah but he's posts, a cunt so i think he's oh yeah he's definitely he's, he's bought, bought fucking lot loads there's uh there's that website you can I, I forget what the name of it is. it's just just social blade it, it, no well the, i've yeah. i've used a different one previously but you, you just ugh, it's uh you spend too much time worrying about it but you can see the spikes where they've suddenly had like ten thousand new followers overnight and stuff um I, I just find the whole fucking, hey, I don't really know anything about this, but I've decided that this is the fucking, uh, the thing that I'm going to get into now. Mm. I just find that so fucking I mean, lame. I would rather die than be that sort of cunt. That, it's, it's, it's a wider indictment of society, though, isn't it? That this is it's not just perfume related. Oof. It's, th- th- this is what people do now. I mean, when I was a kid, I looked at, you know, records and was like, I want to be a rock star, you know, and, and people now are growing up and going, I want to be an influencer or I want to be a YouTuber mm. or whatever. Mm. And, and it's like, yeah. they see, I think you, you, they find their niches and they go, yeah, I'm going to latch onto this and just like, like, mm. like a parasite and then mm. just like bleed anything that's good out of it into some form of monetization. And it's grim really. Um, but I say, I, I, it, obviously, this is a perfume podcast and we talk about perfume, but I think you could probably, any niche, you will find these fucking parasites um, because it's just what people want these days, isn't it? Like, it's what people grow up seeing as, like, the new rock star is, like, to be some fucking Z-list influencer that posts a picture and strokes their ego. It's depressing. And I'm going to kill myself. So should we move Don't on? forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, but there's, there was something as well about what Dan was saying mm. about the laziness of it in terms of this is how many hours performance I get. This is the, you know, the kind of the, the really cold hearted cutting of beautiful fragrance and a 
there's a laziness to the so to, to journalism in it's a lack in, of passion though i don't think it's laziness is. because i don't think it's, it's laziness a lack of passion I, i'm going to be the first one out there to say like these people like it's not they often work hard right like dan you you are you run your like oh, oh I mean, right I mean, yeah intellectual yeah, yeah. Laziness, so, um, not like but actual i say laziness. it's just a lack of passion isn't it it's a lack of passion for the well like that they've got they what they've got like they they the motivation to work hard to grow their channel and see their numbers increase or grow their Insta and see their clout mm. increase or whatever, because that's mm. what's driving them, right? That's the thing that matters. Mm. The actual content is fucking irrelevant. Like, there's no passion for that. No, I agree. And that's the problem. No. What, what I really don't like is the, the cynicism of being like, oh, perfume's like a nice mm. little niche. Exactly. Yeah, fucking yeah. Porn. I'll get into that because you know I'm because already because they fucking kind never make person. it in the beauty sector, which is already saturated. It's like yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. so it's like don't come into my fucking thing with your kind of generic like it's some ubiquitous thing that you can just fit into. You can't. It's full. Fuck off. <laughs> it's full. Yeah. So, sorry. Unfortunately, this niche is full, and you have to fuck off. Um, yeah. To it was clear, uh, Fred. Though. Yeah, I was going to say. To be clear, we're none of us are gatekeepers. Well, here, I don't think because I like. There's a clear so difference between someone who that, wants that's like, like that's the obvious comeback, yeah. isn't it? You, you're just fucking gatekeeping, right? And uh, and I've so I've I've commented uh, like fairly publicly on Instagram, uh, making this kind of thing, and and the responses I've gotten were sort of a li- nobody comes right out and says it because obviously you know uh, very few people seem to want to start a proper argument on on Instagram, but um, but yeah, this this idea that you're you're sort of gatekeeping, and and I've sort of suggested that look, if you haven't fucking invested a good chunk of your own money in buying and trying dozens of perfumes then you cannot really just be a fucking perfume enthusiast slash influencer you have to have actually put something in right to this and 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 found your own way through it rather than the only things you ever review are the things you get sent for free you know who the fuck would trust anyone who literally only knew the perfumes that the brands had sent them for free. That's ridiculous, right? Yeah. I mean, it's such a uh, narrow fucking view of the world. I think ultimately, um, like, if, and, you, if you've got like a hobby that you're passionate about or anything that you're passionate about in life, you just don't like to see other people come in and trample all over that with a lack of passion and a, like dollar bills in their eyes. Do you know what I mean? Because it's just... Exactly. Like, that's the problem. It's exactly. not gatekeeping. It's just like disappointment in these fucking arseholes. And well, say so you find it all uh, over I, I, every you know, walk of I, 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 not just perfume. I feel like saying, I'm not a fucking gatekeeper. I'm not the fucking key master. I'm Zool, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Fuck you. Yeah, I, 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 you know what I mean? I, like, I don't necessarily believe that any, everybody needs to be quite as fucking ridiculous as, as me. And I appreciate that not everybody's made of fucking uh, uh, money and has tons of disposable cash to fritter away on, on perfume. Totally, totally fucking get that, right? However, right, if you haven't tried a load of fucking perfumes just because you've got a bottle of Sauvage and a bottle of fucking Bleu de Chanel, it does not mean you know anything about perfume and your self-appointed I'm a fucking influencer shit just doesn't wash. It's cynicism uh, of, of the worst fucking order. Um but uh, it, it, I just wanted to to uh, bring in the quote from um, it was Freddie Albrighton, a uh, friend of the show. I say friend of the show. He's probably got bored of fucking listening by now. However, he's a fucking star, and he said something like, "Not the, I haven't got the exact set of words to hand, but it was broadly like, um, you know, being an influencer is now a career choice for people." And that's exactly what people are doing. They are literally saying, I want to be an influencer. I I want to fucking, I want to get clout and I want to get free stuff. And it's cool, right? I, free stuff is cool i'm 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 not fucking ashamed to admit i enjoy receiving fucking free stuff from brands but i i feel like uh, you know personally the amount of free stuff i get compared to the amount of stuff that i actually buy myself it's probably less than 10 percent of of everything i get and and it's like it it's a small addendum it's not my everything it's just a little bit of fucking stuff on the side i would be doing this 
and reviewing these perfumes and wasting my own fucking money, even if brands didn't send them to me for review. And often it's a lot easier if they haven't sent it because you don't feel that obligation to sort of try and find the nice thing to say, you know? Um, mm. It's I, I don't know, It just boils my fucking piss. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure... An element of it is me just being bitter that I've been doing this for so long and, and, and my overall fucking subscriber numbers are relatively mm. small compared to some others. I mean, sure, they're, they're sort of moderately decent, but if you compare me to a lot of the bigger channels and stuff, it's 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 small. Maybe it's me just being bitter and, and trying to sort of retroactively justify it. But I do just get really personally angered by these cynical cunts. They do my nutting. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's it's just the cynicism of it, isn't it? And it's it it's you see it say all over life. Like I I you know um you know I do another podcast and and you know I remember when lockdown happened mm. and um, all of a sudden all the celebrities just poured in and it was because they couldn't do anything else. They didn't want to be a podcast. They didn't. I think it sounds wanky to say respect the medium, but they didn't give a shit about the medium or its direction or where it was going or anything. No. They just wanted to come in, make a bit of fucking money whilst they couldn't do anything else and then fuck off. And they didn't care what wasteland they left behind when they left. And and it's, and it's that's the, the, the cynicism and the lack of actual giving a shit of the, like the, the landscape, as it were, like that, that I think is difficult to stomach as someone who's in it with passion. To, like, uh, uh, to see something that you're passionate about sort of stepped all over for commercial gain with an abandon is is difficult to watch, I think. Mm. Yep, yep, um, okay, good. And I, I think that's the problem. Have, have we have we mined this particular seam of hatred for long enough? What would you like to hate on I know, next? like, I just had another go, but can I just do, like, like a, a cash one? Yeah, yeah you can. Uh, the, the more hate, the more hate, <laughs> the merrier. Do you know what I really fucking hate? And probably more than everything we've talked about so far. Is it people who say fucking that's a more after reviewing every no, Zerge off? Okay. No, it's not. They can uh, fuck like, off. I, I, you know, like, that's just, you know, maybe they've just got a colourful tie and, you know, wacky cats. <laughs> No, no, do you know what really fucks me off more? Go on. Is samples with fucking dabbers. And oh. samples dabbers oh. that are in those lids that are just really small. And you look like Why? you're trying to pull it out, but you don't want to spuff the perfume all over the floor Why? at the same time. What's the point know, of those things? Finally get and it out. It's a little plastic pokey bit and it doesn't put the, the perfume doesn't go anywhere so you try yes. to pour it on and it goes everywhere goes all the way down here so it just like dribbles Dribble. down and if you don't like it it's an on your yeah, exactly. clothes yeah. and it just it's just nobody puts perfume on like that anyway They're absolutely so just, useless uh, just invest in some sensible fucking materials to put your perfume if, yeah, in if it yeah. doesn't spray yeah. get to fuck I mean, unless, of course, yeah, it I is an actual atom. I thought that was going to rhyme, then. <laughs> I, yeah. I was going to say, if it doesn't spray, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. okay. Hey! If it doesn't spray, you're not getting any play. Yeah, you know, no, this no. is great. We could be rappers. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I genuinely think, like, I, 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 I have gone, like, I would say I've done, like, you know, got a sample out of a box and been like, I want to smell this, and then you see it, and you go, no, and just put it back and get something else, because fuck that. Like, it's just a ball ache. Uh, so that was my other thing. That yeah, me no, no, I'm, 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 I'm with you. Right, but that's a really good. That's, I, lo- I love the specific, specific, specific. <laughs> well, do you like splash bottles? No, they fuck me off. No, but they, they, like they fuck me off. But I appreciate that they've got a tradition, and you know, whatever. I'm, yeah. you know, maybe, whatever, whatever. I'm not but, a fan of the old splash bottle, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I always end up putting them in a decant anyway. Yeah, yeah. there's that. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. So. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know who wants to go next because I mean, I, I've got a sort of, I've got a list. You go next. Go on, you go next. Okay, go next. batch wankers. Batter up. Batter, <laughs> batter up. Batch <laughs> wankers. Right. What is the deal with fucking batch wankers? Like, I, I believe, I do believe, and I do agree that in broad terms, Aventus has got progressively worse over the years right i agree with that but uh this idea that that kind of like oh yes no this is a 14 h 21 or whatever and this is a 16 z qb 
like who gives a fuck uh, this one has a much more pronounced pineapple and uh, you know it's easier on the birch and like eat a fucking dick man but the the worst thing i saw this i swear to god i saw this the other day someone had said right uh yeah no i've got this sample of a franken batch so uh, uh excuse me what a franken batch this is what they call this is what aventus batch it's wankers like sausages or something no, 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 it's a bottle. He's got a bottle, and basically, he get he, he just gets any decant and he doesn't care about the batch and he just puts them all uh, in the same bottle. Which, if you're a batch wanker, would n- n- well, no, your head. but I believe this 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 Franken batch was put together by batch wankers who who somehow pretend, yeah, who somehow it like, like they're mixed, yeah, <sighs> yeah, yeah, they they sort of like. Oh, well, this needs this needs more pineapple. Okay, I shall add fourteen uh, ZP forty six to it, and like, oh my fucking god! Well, to try and get the ultimate, like the ultimate <laughs> batch wankers, <laughs> fucking wanky. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But then, but then bizarre, I've, I've seen bizarre behaviour. <laughs> it gets worse. It gets worse. Right. So th- this 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 eventus behaviour. Right. I mean, it is ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. But it, that's like on the edge of getting sectioned. That kind it, of it, shit. It, it, Do you it know is. what I mean? If my mate was like, I'm mixing different ones. I'd be like, Are you alright? <laughs> you you horrible. <laughs> dirty <laughs> bastard right but but honestly this 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 just blew my fucking mind to pieces right it's bad enough that they do this with aventus there is an entire parallel stream of people doing exactly the same thing with our math club de nui intense right. uh, <laughs> are you so, fucking kidding me is there a wow. pineapple vintage one as well? Like oh, there probably is. Well. There probably is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, Jesus uh, Christ. yeah. <laughs> no, Jesus Christ, exactly. But there's also, isn't there's a clone house, isn't there? That only clones Aventus, but it clones yeah, the Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that is probably uh, Parfum's vintage is, is what you're referring to there. It, I mean, I, I didn't well, realise that. <clears throat> Absolutely. That was like, What? Mm. And, and so, when so interestingly, Parfums yeah. Vintage is uh, owned by a guy called Damien, who who lives just around the corner from me. And I, uh, I funnily enough, I've never met Damien. I've met his mum. Weird. Maybe Damien doesn't really exist, and it's just his mum doing this. But um, did she smell of a vintage? Yes, yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, 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 and she and she gave me some of the latest samples to to try. Um, and uh, I, I talked to Damien, uh, you know, on online occasionally, and he, he's he's cool. I have asked him, look, why do you keep producing so many fucking Aventus variations? And he basically said, if they stop buying them, I'll stop making them. Which, 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 you know, it's like fair enough. It you know let's not pretend this is art anymore. This is purely a commercial endeavor. You are just you know riding the Aventus train, and I sort of respect the naked kind of truthfulness of that. It's this idea that it, 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 it what just I mean it blows my fucking pea-sized brain. This idea that people think that that they can somehow recreate some perfect aventus batch by taking these different batches and, and and you can almost see them in their like little white lab coats at home like in front of their organ like adding with with a pipette you know like four drops of z04 and you know, like, get a fucking life you absolute wank in front of their organ <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, in a way in a, in a very sort of small Are you way, about to mount res- a defence of these people? Um, I can respect the person that sits at home wanting to mix perfume a little bit more than the rest because in a way that's showing like a spark of creativity there and they're thinking quite deeply and they're saying, actually, if I had a bit of this and a bit of that, they're halfway there to doing something worthwhile with their life, right? <laughs> they've, they've obviously fallen short. <laughs> but I agree with you entirely on batch wankerism. I mean, it's just unreal. And and I think I've got a pretty good handle on fi- why why they people do this. And I think it's because Aventus is no longer a flex, right? So no. the, it the but the, if they've got the ultra special batch, then that is a flex. 
Now, the problem is it's a very fucking sad flex. It's like that social media picture where someone's taken a photo of, like, their perfume with their steering wheel in the background, right? But the steering wheel's a fucking Ford or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, it, that's about the level of flex that oh. saying you've got the special event as batch is. But essentially, it's just a flex, isn't it? And it's very fucking sad. Um, I say, and because of that, I sort of respect the kind of mix of people at home a little bit more because I feel like it's that's less of a flex there, and that's that's they're they're, they're trying to think the poor little beggars. It, it, Do you know what I mean? They're trying to they're trying to they've they 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 they've cottoned on to something, and their their little minds are like the electrodes are shooting, and they're going. Like, <laughs> I mix a bit of this one and a bit of this one I can make something nice like I'm, I'm doing something shooting. I'm doing something I'm a creator you know I mean? but, uh, yeah 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 it, yeah it's like bless them so, you know what I mean like I can it's I can sort of respect it's that like in you're a sort reading of disrespectful way it's like you're reading my mind and and sort of preparing <laughs> the segues for me because next up on my list of shit I fucking detest <laughs> is people who post pictures um, of, of their perfume with some sort of flex with it, right? I mean, the perfume, the perfume. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the perfume is the fucking picture, right? The perfume is the flex. If you put a gun in the same picture, mm. and, and 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 no disrespect to Americans, I understand culturally this is very different. Guns are very different to 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 you guys than they are to us, right? Uh, or at least to some Americans. Broadly speaking, if you put a picture of a gun in a picture with your perfume, say, hey, this is my perfume of the day and my gun of the day. So I don't, I've never understood that. A, gun, a piece of shit. Are certain guns like right? more expensive or more rare or, or something? I don't... Well, I, 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 uh, yeah, they, 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 they... Customize they, 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 they do a, really? they, they say, in the same way as we say scent of the day, they'll say piece, piece of the day. Of the right. day. And there's a because the, the gun is your your piece that you're, you're going to pack that day, and so yeah, I did a piece of piece of the day with my scent of the day, and I it was um my my a Nerf gun that my little five year old gave nice brap. can take out uh, yeah. brap 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 take out some crims <laughs> with that um I I, I mean so so <laughs> no, culturally right I do accept that that guns are completely different right it's it's sort of innate in uh, uh, mm. I don't want to fucking speak on behalf of all Americans, but it, it is it is sort of part of the American. Uh, uh, what do they call it? It's the Second mm. Amendment right, isn't it? The the right to bear arms, yeah. and and it's part of just the way of life for a lot of Americans. And it doesn't mean that they're going to go around killing, although I guess a lot of people do, To be sadly. fair, it's a way of life for a lot of Mancunians as well. Well, that's true, <laughs> but, you know, a nice one, isn't it? Um, so uh, it's just very different. It's very, very different in the UK. We we would, I mean, most people would sort of go, oh, my God, why would you own a gun? That's ridiculous, you know. You could do someone some real damage with that. In, in America, just... Like totally different psychology. It's hard ingrained uh, into the American exceptionalism, isn't it? it that that yeah, yeah, yeah and, uh, absolutely fetishism over the amendment and stuff like uh, that. Uh, um, and 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 I don't, I don't actually. The constitution, s- rather. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah I, I would far prefer Americans weren't so into guns, right? But I don't sort of judge America or or Americans for that in any way. Um, but it does bother me when people sort of flex their guns with their perfume because so is perfume it particularly to be guns that you're upset about well, or is it the flex it has, in general? I was about to say I've... the same thing do you find it the same with a watch if if, if they've got like a oh, Patek Philippe and a Patek Philippe but a to... bottle of Aventus <laughs> oh. yeah you know what what then I mean does that does that annoy yes. you as much yeah yeah yes. yeah because I mean yeah. guns for me are like that to be honest I just find those pictures quite interesting from a cultural perspective but like the the, the flexors get on my tits like you know like they say the stupid car steering wheel or the car keys or <laughs> the, the watch or whatever and you just think wanker <laughs> the bentley car keys yeah oh, i drive a- it's the big watch that i don't like do you know what i mean a patek philippe is like a classy timepiece uh you know it's some of the like like uh maybe like an audemars piguet or some, yeah, some kind of like or like a fucking hublo or something you're like nah like they're, they're a bit like modern kind of like the bit sort of cheesy kind of 
they're, they're still like good watches and stuff, but like they're a bit like they're not exactly classy. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, oh, yeah, I've got a big watch. I think that there's something classy. about oh. um, Panerai. There's something though about people. Oh, Panerai! Yeah, Panerai's <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, do, sorry. Do you, do, uh, wait, what Panerai have you got? You've got very small wrist for a Panerai. Well, you've got a Luminol. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's to make it look bigger. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's all an extension, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, yeah, right well, well, we shave as well, right? So, 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 so yeah. can, I, can I just say, I love a watch. I love a nice picture of a watch. Mm. What I don't like is a flex right and it's it's very different right so i think right. yeah. you know I, I i've been part of watch groups in fucking uh, on facebook and stuff just to look at the watches and actually most of it is people posting interesting watches right and and stuff that is uh uh I mean, it, there's not so much flexing but as soon as you start to assemble a hey look at all my worldly goods and it's a perfume mm. and a fucking set of car keys and a gun and a fucking watch and a knife and i don't know whatever yeah it but just, there are there it's are, just desperate it's, and there are things like that these kind of luxury sort of items uh loosely for men uh that are sort of because because my, my dad was like a scruffy bastard like me not really exactly you know didn't really care about stuff but certain things he would spend money on: perfume, mm. uh, watches, and um, sunglasses of oh. all fucking things. Because he like drove a lot, mm. so he'd always have like really expensive. Stuff. When he, he, all the other shit, he'd be like, "Oh yeah, just get like you know, like what he wasn't asked." Do you know what I mean about his clothes or anything else? But certain things like that, just nice stuff or like leather goods or whatever, he'd always get like really classy kind of shit because it lasts. It's good. You know what I mean? So, I'm, I, again, I'm not defending it because I know exactly what you're saying. These people are flexing, right? Mm. Because they're putting it out on social media to be like, look at the status I've got. And perfume gets kind of dragged into that because it's in that kind of thing of luxury goods. Mm. Do, you know, do you know what I mean? And yeah. perfume is... What about the flex? Go on, of... please. So, no, you, also, you go, you go. I, I was going to say, what about the flex of all of the perfume? Not just like one or two that they might be wearing the day, but when people stand behind all. Yeah, of the I, 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 I find that rather fucking weird. Uh, truth be told, I do find it weird. But I mean, you know, my I've got cupboards full of fucking perfume, but they're just so badly organised. They don't look pretty and stuff. Yeah. But I, I, I just the whole idea of perfume as a sort of flex generally, I think, yeah. is kind of mm. uncool. Uh, I mean. I'm I, I don't know. Maybe people fucking think that 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 my perfume is a flex, and you know, maybe they're right. Maybe I'm just sort of completely fucking, uh, uh not self aware enough to spot it or well, whatever. Those people haven't seen Joe sent me's fucking perfume room. <laughs> that is like, you know, that is like I, it's like a fucking panic room or something. <laughs> Just like panic room. Go, go into and fucking, you know, lock himself away. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I think um, that I'm sort of a little bit conflicted on it, right? Because in one sense, in one sense, I think I would love to have, I would love to have the space to have a dedicated perfume room, and I'd love to have the fucking display. Uh, cabinets and all that to to make it look beautiful um but i do like to think that if i did that i wouldn't then be showing people it it would be for me yeah, right yeah, yeah. i i like to take pictures of individual bottles of perfume and write some fucking garbage about them i i like to think that if i had them all beautifully arranged on a wall i probably wouldn't post photos of it. i don't know maybe i would maybe if i would you, but it, 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 if you led someone into your house and went oh come and see what my hobby is oh look it's my temperature and humidity controlled room <laughs> uh, come inside look at look at these rotating <laughs> fucking glass plinths smell, i've got with like smell this row hypnol on. by the way and uh, yeah <laughs> i'd be like mate it, it, fuck me like do, yeah that's just weird the thing about those flex pictures, right, that fucks me off, and I think um, more than anything else, is just the way it's so convoluted, the way it's so, like, put together, like, carefully, and, and then made to look casual. Like, oh, I just I just accidentally dropped my watch next to my perfume, next to my car keys on the table there. Oh, accidentally. accidentally. I drive a Bentley, oh, I mean, by the yeah, way. You accidentally saw my Lambo. Oh, like, 
It's just fucking ridiculous. But I, 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 I would rather question. people just post a picture of their fucking car and go, Precisely. here's my car. Yeah, by yeah, the yeah. Way. If someone just did that, I would have to, like, fine, that's cool. Post pictures. You, if, you know, you're proud of it. Knock yourself out. It's the fakeness of it. It's the, oh, I accidentally dropped all the shit on the table. And yeah, took a photo I, I totally agree. There, there's, so there's, a guy, there's a guy in the States called Equality Fragrances, and... I, I can't. I, I sort of struggle to make my mind up about him. Sometimes I think he's like tacky as fuck, but actually, I think he 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 speaks a lot of sense. And and on one level, it's a bit cringy to post a picture of your fucking sports car. But on another level, it's just like he's not fucking. He he's not like just kind of like trying to stage it so you accidentally see it or or anything like that. He just goes, this is my fucking car. Yeah, happy with that. He Lovely. just likes it. He's proud of it. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. It, it, there's there's much more integrity and honesty mm. in, in just being fucking straightforward about it like that than there is in, in these contrived fucking, oh, yeah, wow, and it's a picture of my Bentley keys. Fuck off. But I have this. a question, right, and maybe this is like taking it a little bit too deep and unnecessary, but... Those kind of casual, like, posed flex pitch where you have, like, the picture of the car keys and the gun and the, 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 the perfume, or whatever. Have you ever seen a, 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 an account run by a woman do that, like, on Instagram? Because I don't think I was I thinking have. this. I think there is... There, is, there is are there? equivalents, though. I think less... I think less in the perfume sector, but in the beauty sector, there is definitely that kind of, here's my limited edition Chanel lipstick, which you can only buy from the Paris store, next to my Birkin. Mm, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Casually hanging over my knee, which has... Bag. It's a very, it's a very expensive Hermes yeah, handbag. Right. <laughs> casually hanging over my knee, which happens to be, you know, the newest season's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is on the end of my foot. So there is there is <laughs> an see, equivalent. I, but... <laughs> uh, it would just be useless on me. What the fuck's a Birkin, mate? Yeah, mate. <laughs> Yeah. It's about 30 grand's what? worth of handbag. Yeah. You can't have a 30 grand handbag. <laughs> yeah. that, that's not even the most expensive one. That's ludicrous. That's Isn't fucking... that funny, though, how you've got, on one side, you've got men posting pictures of their flexes that probably go over a lot of, uh, like, women's heads. And on the other side, things you've got women posting their flexes and they're going over the men's heads. But it goes to show, actually, how many yeah. do you think are actually aiming at the opposite sex and how many are just trying to be, like, I'm the alpha like, I, I, I'm, I'm the sexiest chick yeah. in the room with the most expensive, oh. like, crocodile Birkin. Or, oh. how, or you know, I'm the biggest fucking guy yeah. in the gym with the <laughs> fastest Lambo or, or whatever. Like. So, so, so maybe, maybe it's because, right, I'm a 47-year-old married dude with two teenage kids and I work from home. I, I am not out there impressing <laughs> anyone. I, I legitimately wear perfume like uh, when no one will smell it but i can go yeah. i can go days without anyone other than my family smelling me right apart from you know i go to the gym but then i don't ever talk to anyone at the gym or anything right so <clears throat> i don't I, I i can honestly say i don't do this to impress anyone at all um and i can't quite understand why anyone would think why 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 would anyone do that why why would anyone mm. sort of think this is how i'm impressing people I, I, it just makes very little sense to me but but perhaps cuz that's cuz i'm old and fucking dull you know i don't know if it's it's not cuz you're old and dull but i think uh, that actually what you're meant to say is that i'm not old to... or dull <laughs> <laughs> you're not Thank old you. or dull oh. darling <laughs> i think there is something though that is opposite to uh, proper collectors because I think that we, we had a conversation on one of the groups didn't we about mm. collecting before our collection episodes and a lot of people were like I'm actually really embarrassed about yeah, it I don't yeah. tell anyone I don't show anyone my collection you know I hide the post yeah. when people come in or when you know from my kids or from my spouse or whatever um and so there is that there, I think there was a real difference between the people who are collecting because they love perfume because they can love the smells they love all of that and they do have a cabinet with it all laid out nicely but even then on the groups you don't really get flex pictures even of people's whole collection very often very um, very rarely and, and, there's and a big when when you see rarely. a whole collection picture it's like a one-off it's like 
yeah, I organised yeah. all my collection finally. Here, here's what it looks like. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I was thinking about that. You know, when people come round and stuff, uh, uh, most of the time I don't show them my perfume collection. Uh, I, I was thinking about what Ben said. It's, it's, it, it's almost like a source of shame. But I do, yeah. you know, with my closer friends, I do quite like sort of going right. Try this or try that, and like trying to help them find yeah. a perfume that 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 they sort of love that, that kind of makes that that resonates with them. Th- that I do enjoy. Right, that I get something from that. But just showing off my fucking mm. perfume collection, nah, cuz. <laughs> only a dickhead would own that much perfume. I can assure you. <laughs> ridiculous um okay james are you with us or are you having technical trouble yes i'm i was having technical troubles but i've my headphones have just come back on so good good okay. good what do you hate james you've been very uh you've been very um you've been very tame bit and sheepish, polite haven't i bit she- yeah. a little bit sheepish a little bit backward in coming forward yeah. on this one okay what do you hate right, other so- than everyone and everything <laughs> okay right so everyone get ready <laughs> I, no, I'm, I like to say I'm a, I'm a lover, not a hater, but I'm going to hate on some people now. Uh, <laughs> specifically, Woo Peddling Witch Brew Natural Perfumer Wankers. Oh. oh uh, the cunts. I, I mean, oh, it's not only naturals. Yeah, uh, those kind uh, of people who are like, oh, yeah, I make these like natural perfumes that are shit, by the way. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, they're kind of like usually conspiracy theorists uh you know about the whole you know if and all that shit and they seem to think that like well they seem to think that like you know um they're probably fucking anti-vaxxers and all that shit (laughs) and they they basically like go on about you know uh like how bad synthetics are and all this Uh. when it's not even a versus battle we've all fucking got past that why are you still dwelling in this weird little witchy fucking you know coven that you're in. Uh, I don't fucking get it. They're arseholes. And then quoting stuff about IFRA as if it's like, you know, some fucking shadowy organization when it's like blatantly open, the most open fucking thing you can imagine made by people who are in the industry for the fucking industry. Let's not get into that. But then, um, you know, they're, they're kind of like dodging around the safety going, oh, well, you know, natural materials have never done me any harm. When it's like, they're probably the most, you know, they're discrete packets <laughs> yeah. of things that do fucking cause allergies and fucking <laughs> terrible things to happen. I mean, you know, I often say this, like syphilis is fucking natural. Do you know what I mean? Like tornadoes are fucking natural, but like they're, they're still fucking dangerous, aren't they? Um, uh, you know, arguably more so uh, than stuff that's made in a lab. But anyway, uh, what else have I said? Um, they are technically... It's it's also like where they draw the line as well, right? It's like, well, like, like they're a bit like creationists in that way where they're so confident of their beliefs, but you blow a hole in their argument within one sentence. And all you've got to say is like, well, what define a natural for me? Like define, like, because they're fucked instantly. Like, uh, the people perfume. are fucking stupid. I, I had an argument... Um, so, I, by the way, there's a, a absolutely brilliant Facebook uh, group called Let's Not Date, which um, I follow, which is, um, it, weirdly, it's, I don't know what, how I ended up following this, but it's basically a, a group um, largely demonstrating the sort of bullshit women have to put up with online. It's very interesting. Um, and it was more sort of personal interest because obviously my my kids were sort of getting to the age where they were you know online a lot and stuff. Um, but I had an argument with with some woman about perfumes, and uh, uh, she was saying that she was allergic to uh, any non natural perfumes, and and I was like, yeah, that's not true. What you're telling me is that you don't like the smell of things that you consider to be unnatural, okay? That's very different (laughs) to you are allergic to perfumes not made with natural ingredients. It's like, it's a fucking ridiculous thing to say. Because presumably all of her hair care products and... Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. and, And her washing products and laundry products and products in the house that she's using to clean the floor or indeed her spouse is using to clean the floor and um, all of those are unperfumed then 
Literally every Literally. product made with quote unquote fine fragrance, which is almost everything. So you're, you're not allergic to herbal essences. Uh, no, Hawaii no, no, because that's Barry, natural. Barry love, but you are allergic yeah, to Dior. Be, it's, it be, you are allergic to Dior. That's it is, amazing. It is amazing, <laughs> and uh, uh, and it's amazing because she was a stupid fucking fuck. Uh, so, uh, so there you go. Anyway, uh, natural. I'm with you, James. This idea that uh, uh, pe- mm. uh, proponents of the all natural perfumery bullshit, yeah. uh, and that's not that's not me necessarily slagging off naturals. As no, you know. What I know. Uh, it's you, know, you slagging off people. Brilliant. It's you slagging off people who insist on using only natural ingredients. Uh, materials because it's a cult as well yeah, you know? yeah it's a fucking cult it's the woo behind it as well and the people that again propagate that it, to get some sort of commercial gain out of it like you know you see those websites and they really push like how theirs is the most purest and and you know the, the least damaging and all this and and it's like oh. so cynical <clears throat> you want to talk about so cynical. cynical perfumes that are cruelty free like, uh, what, you mean you <laughs> didn't spray this directly into an animal's fucking eyes? That's great. That's wonderful. But why would you do that? I mean, it's ridiculous. So, it's, well, uh, hmm. uh, sorry, can I just can I just speak on that for a second? Go. Like, uh, that, that's another thing. Again, I was going to touch on this in my other kind of rant subject, but I will touch on it now because it's coming up. So, basically, uh, uh, all chemicals, right, uh, go through a process uh, through the EU, whether it's like the European Chemicals Agency or whatever. And a lot of these chemicals have a, a legacy of being tested on animals, right? So just because yeah. something isn't directly tested on animals now, the reason it's not is because it was in the past, right? It's been it's done, been done yeah, yeah. already. So if you're trying to claim that, oh, well, all these materials are fine because... Of, and in a sense, yeah, that's good because they're no longer tested on animals because we know all the sensitization. Well, not all of them, but it's ongoing. But, like, most of the sensitization issues, so we don't have to put it on a fucking rabbit's ears anymore or whatever, you know, the various things that they do. And that, I, I like I say, I'm not really for animal cruelty, but I understand... Uh, that it's a necessity, certainly in the area that I work in, in medical devices and uh, biocides and things like that. We're doing things for the good of, you know, mankind. Again, you know, prioritising us over animals, uh, which some people have a problem with as well. But I think to a certain degree, it's got to be okay. And I think when you start going on about, oh, these... And I don't even think that a lot of these brands are fact-checking when they say vegan or cruelty-free, or sustainable, or any of those things, because a lot of these materials, as we know, go into the fucking environment, and they stay there, and they're volatile organic compounds, they can cause issues to, you know, uh, aquatic life, or they can uh, accumulate in things, so we know that these issues exist, right, and yet they're kind of trading off this kind of flippant sort of use of, oh, it's vegan, or it's this, it's that, have you really dug down into those materials, or even natural materials, it has some kind of oppression gone on or some kind of like, you know, are the farmers getting paid fairly? All these different... There's so many mm. implications for things that I don't think that all these shitty little brands that are popping up going, oh, we're this, that and the other. I don't think they've done full due diligence on their uh, products and their their materials that they're using. I don't know for a fact, but I would hope that they do. And I'd hope there's some kind of system that they can go through but I, the way the way that I know perfumery is, I don't think there is because there's no one uh, really. Uh, I, I again, it's more like a trade in standards type issue. This where are you saying things? But I don't think they're, they they've got bigger fish to fry. Do you know what I mean? Than like little companies saying this stuff. But I think a lot of them. I, I would if I did a deep dive into stuff. I think they're still using things that are not necessarily completely vegan or whatever. Mm. Just a hunch, mm. said Colombo. <laughs> mm. One more thing. Just one more thing, madam. Just one more thing. Uh, excellent. Uh, good. What else is pissing you off, James? Oh, me again. Okay. Yeah, why not? Uh, clone brands. Mm. Oh. Mm. I mean, this is a whole sort of episode in itself. I yeah, I mean... Don't- care about 
close? Am I? I'm probably alone I, on this. Well, I I know we've had this. Oh, there's a place for them, and they actually stimulate people's interest in the real thing, and they might go out and buy the real thing, or they might you know get into perfume in a kind of accessible way. And why are you okay with fake Rolexes, and you're not okay with this? That and the other. so there, there's loads of you know uh, counter arguments and all that. And I, I don't like the kind of dumbing down of perfumery and the kind of plagiarism and things that go on, which uh, really gets my fucking goat. But the worst kind are these like kind of little UK ones that are popping up now. Let me just play you uh, uh, an advert from one uh, that I popped up on my thing today. If you still do this, you're dumb. Spending hundreds on designer fragrances when they can be made from up to 40% water. This sadly used to be me. I was dumb. But then I discovered this brand and I felt so smart. This is Noted Aromas. They're inspired by designer fragrances and cost a crazy amount less. Like this one cost me 19.99 and the designer one used to cost me 235 pounds. They are auto parfum, which means they have a higher concentration of perfume oils and less water. So don't be dumb, be smart, like me. And get five bottles of Noted Aromas for the price of one designer scent. So oh. the idea is be smart, don't be dumb. He calls the people dumb and he calls himself dumb, uh, which is not a very nice, you know what I mean? It's it's just this lack of like class or like it's anything. Just, yeah. It's just awful. It's awful. It, and, I, you know, we'll beep out the fucking name of it because I don't want to be advertising this shit on, on here. Yeah. But like, it's just, I, I, well, I it you is know. noted aromas, go, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, fuck noted, them. Noted aromas. <laughs> yeah. So... So to like defend it, right? You could say that in a sense, it's demo- like like, and and it, I'm more or less I'm trying to defend the indefensible <laughs> way, right? So it's not like I'm standing yeah. behind it, but what I will say is it is in a sense democratizing perfume and making it more accessible to people Correct. with less money, right? Which I is good, but it's at the expense of other people's IP, so yeah. that obviously makes that very difficult to defend. But to be honest, the thing that I find more distasteful is that it's nineteen ninety nine a bottle. That's two. It should be a fiver. <laughs> I, like, it, yeah, twenty I, quid is not cheap. For twenty quid, you could buy a I, decent it's perfume. Such fuck. Well, you can get yourself a bottle yeah, of taboo. You can get. Oh, quite. You can exactly. get a bottle of Dana taboo for twenty quid. Yeah. These people yeah, are bro, dumb. I, I usually get yourself used a bottle of taboo. Now I is smart, isn't it? Oh, fuck off, mate. Who, uh, I got a bottle of taboo and yeah. smell like an old lady and, now, and yeah, <laughs> mad yeah. drip, 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 drip. I smell like an old lady. It's good. Uh, I, I yeah, <laughs> fucking sorry. That is just the worst, the worst impression of that advert. However, uh, yeah, no, I, I get it. I fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, James. I sort of low key hate that. I sort of low key hate the quality of advertising. Um, you know, this this idea that um, hey, you twat, you pay load of money for this product, get it for less, like with this yeah, with this bullshit. Yeah. Like, I don't so know. we didn't put anything into the development of this. We just stole it. No, uh, you know, we did we did a GCMS fucking thing, and we probably used shitty materials that are as, not as good as, as the actual thing. Anyway, we fu- and, as if they did a GCMS. They didn't even do a GCMS. They just bought them. Some Correct. Oils well, from well this is it. They probably just bought a fucking you know, uh, yeah, exactly, a, a ready-made like oils or a fucking formula yeah. you know what i mean well they probably like say probably didn't even fucking do that um i'm giving them too much credit yeah uh, uh, nobody's uh, doing a gcms of fucking baccarat rouge i assure you um yeah well i know uh somebody posted one um i think it was lord i think it was lord of Miel, actually yeah but no, no our friend uh, uh, Christoph. this is my whole point nobody needs to do it it's been done. There's there's nobody. There's no brand now sending off oh, their fucking baccarat to, rouge to, to be it. fucking analysed. Nah, they just fucking no no. Well, they, they, the they, they, they're, they're, probably, they're Well, they're probably not. Yeah, yeah. I, I get your point there. Yeah, because it's been like a while, but somebody has to do it in the first place. Oh, uh, because somebody somewhere did mm, it. But 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 trust me, yeah. noted aromas were not the pioneers here. No, no. And that's part of the thing that they're jumping on a bandwagon <laughs> that was already fucking like fuck off a while ago, 
And they're kind of, they, these are the ones that are really getting my fucking goat now. Mm. Because they're like, oh, yeah, like as if this is an original it, it, thing it, to it, do. It, do you know what pisses me off most about that fucking advert? When he says, it's old de parfum, which means it lasts eight hours or something. Well, I can't remember exactly what he said, but it's old, yeah, it's old, de, much. It's old de parfum, which means it's strong and you're getting good value for money. It's like, fuck off. You know, if you don't know what a fucking eau de parfum is, just, I don't know, fuck off maybe or use the internet or something. I don't know. It's the worst but is this just us being Yeah, really we're so snobby. Like, not down with oh, kids. Do you know what I mean? Such a snobby like, old We're just cunt. old yeah. and snobby. And all, like, like all the kids listen to this are going, like, <laughs> 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 the kids. I don't think any like, kids listening to this. <laughs> no, no, no. But you know what I mean? If they were, they'd just be like, look at these stuffy the old cunts. kids listening to this. <laughs> um, okay, well, I, I'm sort of... Um, on, on the one hand, I'm loving this intensely, and on the other hand, I'm painfully aware that we're probably approaching the three-hour mark now on this podcast, so I'm sort of inclined to say, hey, we should wrap it up and maybe bring back the hate for a part two at some point and on. Uh, what do you guys think? I think that's probably best. At this point, we're also, I think we've yeah. reached that peak yeah. sort of... Uh, Shouting at clouds, nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> grumps, peak grumps, yeah. <laughs> peak grumps, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, peak grumps, bro. Have you tried noting the rules? <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh God, uh, we've got to stop You'll saying have to the brand. Out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You just have to beep out the brand name, and it will all be fine. So, um, look. I feel suitably vented. I've enjoyed venting my spleen, and uh, hopefully uh, all y'all have enjoyed it too. Uh, We will be back in two weeks' time with another fucking epic episode of Les Odorants. Until next time, bye. 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 Bye.